everyone, it's Lucy and we are finally here at the annual, well I don't actually know if it's annual, but I suppose I did one last year, so annual <laughs> makeup declutter. This one is going to be a really big makeup clear out, much like the wardrobe declutter series this year was a big wardrobe declutter. So if you haven't seen that, then go and check it out. Both of these are being just a little bit extra thorough this year is because I am actually moving soon. So if there was time to be a little bit more ruthless with a declutter, I figure now's as good as time as any. I was gonna say I try to be like somewhat succinct and brief in my videos, but being real with you, it is very chatty. I'm giving you sort of little reviews of a lot of different products. And I will be putting all of the details and links and things down in the description box below. So if you're looking for that info, it's all gonna be there. One thing I wanna mention that I do mention in other declutter sort of videos is just keep in mind with your big, beautiful, juicy brain that as you're watching myself and actually a lot of other creators who make declutter content as well, I'm assuming, talking and creating content around fashion or like in this video, beauty or any other topic that can produce declutter content. I do have a little bit of a different relationship with products than I did when I didn't do this. And the amount that I have in this video that I use, that I test and try and even declutter is more than I would have if I didn't do what I do. So it's just not necessarily like standard and normal. So if something doesn't work for me, even if it's a great product, but it's just not something I really reach for, I do dip and pass it on. Also, I should probably clarify what decluttering means in this sense. But basically when I say throughout the video that I am decluttering something, if it's expired, because a couple of the products are expired, then those ones are thrown out or the container is recycled. Anything that is open, lightly used is in good condition. Um, I do have friends and family who are not overly bothered by sharing cooties with me. And that's most of the products you'll be looking at on camera, but off camera, anything that I get given as PR or as a gift that I end up not using, I do give again as gifts to friends and family or I'll donate it. So that's kind of how everything works in case you're curious on the behind the scenes. But just giving you a heads up in case you didn't already see the time code on this video but this is going to be a long one so get a little drinky drink i have a cup of tea or a snack and snuggle in but before we dive into looking at hands let's talk about my feet <laughs> and more specifically vivaya footwear who are sponsoring this video and have been huge supporters of the channel this year vivaya is a footwear brand that makes classic and stylish designs with a focus on being eco-friendly and sustainable i wear their shoes a whole bunch and you've heard me talk about a few different styles that i like across a few different videos but i know from the power of analytics and data that a lot of you are heading into some chilly weather or you're already in chilly weather so i wanted to talk about a couple of pairs of the vivaya boots in particular i have here one of their best sellers which is the tara pro which is a knee high pair of as you can see very classic black boots now a couple of things about these bad boys first up they have a very stretchy fabric it's like a firm stretch so you feel secure but they're like comfy to wear and they also fit wide calves and the opening is elastic so a very quick slip to get them on because i don't know about you but some boots are just like a bit of an event to get on like it's a whole ordeal and as a little added bonus they are also water repellent i really like the vise designs because i find their pieces to be very versatile and again quite classic and are quite complementary to a lot of different style aesthetics i also have these cuties here if you prefer like a shorter option these are the melissa and boots it is actually quite difficult to find like a nice lighter gray like this but this one comes in a bunch of different colors on the website and again they have the elastic opening so very easy to slip on and off and they also have a block heel so again a very classic type of design but also key comfy and they also have a discount code with Vivaya, which is Lucy Vivaya for you to save when you shop. So if you're on the hunt for some very cute but comfy shoes, I will put all of the information in the description box down below. Thank you again to Vivaya for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's get into the declutter. So here we have drawer number one, which is all things base and face. And this is kind of what it's looking like at the moment pre-declutter. Let's jump into drawer number two, and that is all things eyes. And here is what it looks like pre-declutter. And last but not least, we have drawer number three, which is all things lips. And this is what it's looking like before the declutter. Okie dokie, we have a lot to get stuck into. I've got my little press on nails on, so hopefully they're looking semi-glamorous. And we have a lot to get into, so we will just get stuck in. If you do hear any birds, they're birds, that's what they are. So let's get started with base products. This is just the first round. I do have my little tea that's gonna be with me because I feel like we're gonna be here for a while. Here we have primers, concealers, setting sprays, and foundations, not including cushion foundations, which will just be its own whole category because I've been testing a lot of those. So let me just separate all of this and we'll do it category by category. Here are all of our primers. There's more than I anticipated. I didn't really think I was like a primer person, but I clearly have six. Uh, technically, you could say this one is like 
a tinted moisturizer opposed to a primer. It's kind of hard to say, but I mostly use it as a primer, so that's why I put it here. If you're familiar with any of these products or just with me and my makeup style, you probably know I really like a dewy kind of glowy finish. So a lot of these primers are like radiance or illuminating type primers that I really like layering underneath other products to just get that sort of inner glow. And actually, funnily enough, these ones here are all kind of new to me. Like I've been using them all recently and actually all four of them I really enjoy for sort of different reasons. These two are both K-Beauty brands. You've got the VDL Lumi Layer and the Too Cool For School Art Class Watery Blur. I don't normally like these types of like blurring silicone-y because I find that they, I don't know, like my skin doesn't really get along with them. Especially because my skin is a little bit more dehydrated and dry. I find those primers kind of can exacerbate that fact. But this one from Too Cool For School, I actually do feel like it does give me that blurring vibe, but it's not like mattifying or drying. So I think this one's pretty good. And then this one from VDL, I'm pretty new to, but it's kind of like, as you can kind of tell from like the bottle finish being kind of iridescent, it's like an iridescent primer. It was really, really like popular a while ago. I don't know if it's like as hyped now, but I am still testing this. I've only used it a couple of times, but I like it so far. This one from Laura Mercier, similar story, another radiant primer. This one is more of like a peachy kind of champagne-y glow, which I kind of tend to prefer like more opaly like white sort of shimmer but this is quite similar to like the tone of my natural skin so it's actually very very natural um and the glow and the hydration finish it gives is really nice so i like all of these i'm going to keep all of these this one is from Emco Beauty, who I've worked with a little bit, but uh, I have been using this quite a bit recently because it is, you can probably tell from the packaging, very much a dupe of the Charlotte Tilbury Superstar, uh, what is the name of the one? Hollywood Glow? I haven't tried the Charlotte Tilbury one, but this is basically like a glowy tint. I've been really enjoying wearing this on its own with a little bit of concealer or wearing it under like a light foundation or cushion. I've been really surprised by how much I've been enjoying this. So keeping that one as well. And then these two, this one is the Peach C Peach Glow Makeup Base. And I think this is fine, but it doesn't really blow me away. It's not that I wouldn't recommend it. Like I think some people would really like it, but I just have other products I prefer. And because I get the opportunity to test a lot of things for products that are like just okay, don't really reach for it and I have something else that's an alternative that's better. I tend to pass them on as soon as I kind of come to that conclusion. <laughs> I have been saving doing the makeup organizing for this video. So this one I will be passing on. And this is my MAC strobe cream. I don't know what happened to the label. It's like smudged away, <laughs> but I have had this for a really, 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 really long time. I've mentioned this in other videos, but when it comes to expiry dates, I know a lot of people are hyper vigilant around the expiry of products. And I think it's good to, you know, be on top of things. My personal rule of thumb, especially because I am not a makeup artist, I just use it like personally on myself. If the formula doesn't smell different, feel different, look different, then you're usually pretty good. And that especially applies to things like powder products and then be a little bit more vigilant with your liquids and creams because it's just more likely, you know, it's, it's wet, moist environment. So, you know, things are more likely to go funky there. But in saying all that, I have had this for a really long time uh, and I don't know if I should continue. I've definitely had it for longer than the 24 months that it is recommended. But you know what? I just put a little bit on my hand and you can kind of see that glow. It smells and looks fine. So I might just need to give it just a little clean up for my own satisfaction, but I am actually gonna hold onto it because this has this really pretty white opalescent glow that I just don't think these ones can really do. I'm a big strobe cream fan. I think it's just such a beautiful product from MAC. I've used strobe cream for years. I know the original one is the peach one, but this is the silver like white one that I really, really, really like. I was kind of thinking of decluttering this, but I think I'm gonna keep it because I can. Didn't expect myself to be like a primer girly, but I've just been really enjoying what all of these have been doing recently. I've definitely been enjoying a lot more like low to medium kind of coverage. So I have been able to, I guess, notice the difference from kind of products underneath that can like change the finish a little bit more. That's my theory at least, but we don't need to over intellectualize it. These are the ones that are staying and this one is going. Okay, foundations. There are not that many here because I honestly, again, have 
a lot of Korean cushions and have been really enjoying using and testing those. These are my five foundations that I have, so let's talk through them. These two here are the lighter coverage ones. We have the Summer Fridays Sheer Skin Tint, which I haven't used a bunch, but I have been using recently and it is super natural, very, very lightweight and watery. You can kind of like put a lot on and kind of rub it in sort of haphazardly and it still looks really nice. I have mine in the shade one, um, but yeah, it's a very, 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 very light coverage foundation. So the shade is definitely flexible. I really like Summer Fridays as a brand. Generally, they have a lot of products that I really, really like and enjoy. So I'm keeping this one and I'm also keeping this one. I think you've seen me talk about this before, but this is the Porcelain Base Skip Tone Up Beige. It is just like, I don't know, like a tinted moisturizer BB cream, but the finish it gives is really nice. The tone works really well for me. This is more of like a creamy kind of whipped consistency compared to this one, which is like very watery. But this one is a little bit higher coverage and a little bit more kind of like a traditional tinted moisturizer, I would say. But yeah, I enjoy both of these. These are both very like low maintenance, like chill kind of options. Then we have two fingerprinty little foundation sticks. We have the Hourglass Vanish Stick. This has been my holy grail, like ride or die foundation. I don't actually use it all the time because it is like a little bit more medium to full coverage. But whenever I have something I have to go to and I'm like, I can't have my foundation not work out. Like I need this to work. Like it's just so reliable. I've said it before, I've taken naps in this foundation and woken up and it's all still perfectly in place. It just lasts really well. The color is really good for me. This is in the shade cream. Also, I feel like a lot of people say this is like for oily skin, but really for drier skin types, if you prep properly, this stick has the most beautiful like satin kind of like, I don't know, like almost like photoshopped, but like still realistic skin finish. Like you're wearing makeup, but it looks like you're wearing a lot less than you are because the finish is so good with the coverage if that makes sense you know some full coverage foundations they just look kind of cakey or they look kind of heavy like it's very apparent the amount of product you have on this is just like shears out to be super thin it's very customizable i can't say enough good words about this like hourglass for complexion products this one on the other hand is a disappointment to me this one is the espoir b glow pro taylor glow stick foundation honestly this was a real disappointment compared to the other espoir complexion products i've tried which i really enjoy those are all cushions though that i've tried so maybe maybe that's the difference but i tried using this and every single time i've used this i feel like it was just like a struggle <laughs> to get it to like sit properly and it would like kind of separate and like sit weirdly on my pores and it was just like a very irregular <laughs> experience when it comes to foundations especially for like a glowier dewier type of foundation that i'm used to so i don't really use this and i'm going to declutter this and then this foundation i love i think it's amazing this is my like glowy fancy i want to look like an ethereal angel maybe slightly greasy but like in a cool way <laughs> maybe i'm not really selling it this is the glow lasting foundation from hera it is definitely on the pricier end hera is like a more luxury korean brand but the finish this gives it reminds me a lot of the giorgio armani luminous silk that very kind of like lift from within glowy dewy like ethereal look i think this is beautiful i wish they had more extended shade range because it's not amazing like a lot of Korean complexion ranges but usually the foundations are better and this one is like you know the finish this gives is very luxe that I think just makes it quite unique so I am definitely holding on to this and very similar to the primer situation we have four foundations I'm going to be keeping and one I'm going to be decluttering but you know what uh good riddance <laughs> is that harsh I think it's just surprising seeing how like through my teen to adult life, how much like cosmetic formulas have advanced and then you just try something that's like just really bad. <laughs> but again, someone else could use this and it could work really well for them. But I try to pick products that I think are gonna work for me. But this is like the kind of formula that I feel like would work with my skin, but then it didn't. So I'm like, who is this for? A mystery. Anyway, goodbye. Now we have concealers. Um, 
I'm having a bit of a weird time with concealers, to be honest, other than like these two, which I have like loved these both. I would say I've repurchased this NARS concealer, but honestly, I think I've had this for like ages and I still haven't run out and it's still good. So let's just talk about it while I'm mentioning it. This is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I have mine in the shade Chantilly. I'm not gonna open it because it looks a little uh, destroyed, <laughs> not destroyed, well loved but uh this is just amazing i absolutely love this concealer especially for blemishes or dark spots it just covers it it's reliable i i just trust it i don't have to worry it's an amazing product i really really love this product and another one that i really really love this is the formerly becca but now it's like the becca by smashbox because becca is no longer but then smashbox now owns the formula and it's like exactly the same this is the under eye brightening corrector in light to medium if you deal with kind of dark under eye circles and you feel like even if you put concealer on that kind of bluish purpley undertone is still peeking through this is this is it i don't know how many shades they have i think they have maybe one or two other shades but it is like a corrector it's on that like peachy orangey side of things this was a game changer for me it's a holy grail I have repurchased this and I will continue to repurchase this as long as they make it. I will often just use this under my eyes and not do additional concealer if I am going for a more low coverage natural kind of vibe. Um, so these are like the day to day ones that I will always like take with me if I'm traveling or I'm always using. These two are like the greatest of all time. I love them. And then we have these which are just like your more typical kind of like liquid concealers i suppose these ones are kind of in the brightening correcting category but these all sort of fit into the other category other as in not these two <laughs> i have sort of mixed feelings on the group here but i'm not even sure which ones i'm gonna keep if i'm being for real i am gonna keep this one which is one i just got off of yes style it's the minest i think hold on tight concealer sometimes i just am looking for a concealer that is the right shade something that is quite fair but not overly yellow and not overly pink just sort of like more in that like neutral kind of territory and i think at the moment this is like the best color match for me in terms of liquid concealers but i'm not like blown away by the formula it's like fine and it works so i'm gonna hold on to it but i yeah it's a category that i've been neglecting a little bit in terms of like exploring newer formulas this one is it's it's good from memory it is quite budget friendly as well um but i'm not like you know i'm not in love with it like i'm in love with these two you know what i mean so i'm gonna hold on to that because i think it's like the best color match for me out of this group this is the i'm Uni cover up tip concealer i do think this one's pretty solid but i have found that this one just does oxidize a little too dark for me and then as i'm like finishing up my makeup or like i go outside and i like notice i have like darkness around my under eyes because i mainly use these like on top of my corrector for additional under eye brightness and coverage i'll notice this being like a little bit too dark a little bit like a dull almost and i'm like oh no so i am going to dig this one and then these three here i'm kind of like testing out and trying i have been using this again recently this is the maybelline instant age eraser multi-use concealer this i have used before and like finished up before i think maybe when i was like in high school or uni i just like came back to it because i fondly remembered my experience with it and it's still like really solid really good i like this one but it's not like an all over the face concealer for me I think I will hold on to it because I do like the formula and the finish under the eyes. Again, especially if I'm just doing that and not a lot else. And then these two, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> this is one I picked up from Fenty Beauty. It is the Bright Fix Eye Brightener. I was just curious to see what else was on the market to see if anything was better than the Becca under eye brightener. To me personally, it's not. I think it's fine. It is a very like light sort of pinky tone. So I do think it works well for the purpose, but it's sort of in that in between where I don't think it has like quite the right tone or as good coverage as the Becca, but then it's again, not multi-purpose as a concealer. So actually, as I'm saying that, I think I will declutter this. I have been using this for quite a while and I, I feel like every time I use it, it's just like yeah, this is not as good as the other thing, but like it's here. 
there is nothing egregiously wrong with this, but there's also nothing um, spectacularly right about it. So it's also going to go into the declutter section. And then this one is from Sephora. It is their best skin ever concealer. I got sent a few different shades of these from Sephora Australia. And initially I picked up like the lightest one because I am quite used to being the top end of the scale. But this is, I think, a little too pale for me. I mean, probably not if I I mean, probably not as like a highlighting type concealer, but I don't really do that kind of full coverage, like lots of layers of like concealer and contour type of makeup that often. So this color, I have been trying to use it to brighten, but honestly, like with this color and the formula, it's quite a like, it says it's high coverage. I don't know if I would agree with that. I don't know. Maybe it's just how I'm using it, but I feel like the coverage on this is not that high for the amount of product you use. The finish is nice, but I would actually put this in the category of a more like natural conceal. Like it says it's a natural finish, but I wouldn't describe it as high coverage and I wouldn't say it's like super buildable just to me personally. So in saying that, I feel like this really light shade doesn't actually work for me and probably a shade down or two, which I do have somewhere. So I think I need to potentially look at some of the slightly darker shades they sent me because I think those would work better as like a natural kind of chill concealer. So I think I am going to declutter this one just because how I've been using it hasn't really worked for me, but I think that's down to the shade selection. I do have some deeper shades, so I will have a look at those and test those out. Good ratio with the concealers. These ones are staying, these ones are getting decluttered. And then we have setting sprays. There are just two. I guess technically I also have Fix Plus kind of somewhere else around here, but I really like Fix Plus and I always use it, so I'm not decluttering that. But these are two like setting finishing sprays as opposed to Fix Plus, which is also a setting spray, but is a bit more like multi-perp to me, at least. I have this one here, which you can kind of see has like this like pearly kind of dealio going on. This is a K-Beauty brand one. And I have this one, which is the Urban Decay All Nighter. Um, I'm only gonna keep the Urban Decay All Nighter. I don't use setting spray on the daily. Again, it's just the kind of makeup I do. <laughs> But when I do use setting spray, if I'm wanting to kind of take the powder down and like rehydrate my makeup, I'll use Fix Plus. If I want my makeup to stay, I'll use All Nighter. This is nice and like the little pearl detail in there is cute. It doesn't really give an overly pearly finish. Um, it's fine. I just don't see myself reaching for it as much as the other two. And because it's like a little spray bottle, I'd rather pass it on to someone else who can use it because there's still quite a lot left. It's a really cute product, but you know, it's just like fine. And again, I'm trying to pare things down and streamline. So this one is getting passed on and I am keeping this one. Alrighty, from that first round, this is what we're decluttering, which isn't an awful lot, but that is okay. If I like all of those products, that's fine. I might have some, you know, that are driven by the force of time, but, but these ones are getting decluttered, especially this one. <laughs> this one sucks. Alrighty, here are all of my cushions quite a few here. Uh, I could go more into depth, but I am actually going to do a TikTok about all of these different cushions and kind of rating them and giving me reviews. So I'm just going to split them and tell you which ones I'm keeping, which ones I'm not. And if you want to see like the full review, then you can go check out my little, little TikTok. And decision may change, but I think I'm definitely keeping these ones and then not these ones. And then I think we're gonna do it like that, I think, but that may change, but that that is cushions. Now let's do powders. I think this one should be pretty simple, I think, although potentially not very satisfying. Okay, I'm basically gonna keep everything except this one. And that's not even really like shade to this one. This is the pressed powder from Flower Nose. This one is obviously beautiful. Like look at this like mermaid packaging, um, the inside. I've used it like a decent amount, um, not a heap, but a little bit. This powder works fine. I just have others that I prefer and like better. But I think if you are oily, you would probably like this a lot more than I do. But I'm just, I don't use a ton of powder unless I'm filming. But if I am filming, I have other powders I like more than this one. So again, with all makeup and stuff, it is very much like personal preference. This is not like that foundation I was talking about before where I'm like, this is a garbage product for everyone. This one is just like, 
not for me, I think, compared to even like their own other powder. This is like the loose powder. I like this formula from Flower Nose a lot more. I also like the packaging even more. I think both the packaging is actually really cute, but this packaging is like the most me. This powder is loose, um, a little bit of like a lighter, thinner texture, which I think works better if you are a little more dry, dehydrated. This one is a little more heavy duty. Um, so again, good for oily types, but I am not necessarily an oily type. So decluttering this one, keeping this one. And then these all kind of serve different purposes and do different things. This one here from EG Lips is their Blur Powder Pack. I mainly just use these to keep in my like bag because they're very compact and they have the little sponge and they have like a little protection-y thing over the powder for the sponge. So they're great to carry around um, and take traveling. So I don't always actually have this in my drawer. I just have it in like my makeup pouch or in a bag. So that is really great and portable for that purpose. Pressed powders, we have one of my all time favorites. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. This is in the shade Ethereal. I have hit pan on this one, but I love this powder for a really beautiful, like candle lit, glowy, natural finish. This is like the best. This is like my go-to natural daily powder. Um, and depending on how I'm filming, if I'm not filming with big lights, if I'm filming in natural daylight, I'll probably use this one as well. I just love the way it works. It's so gorgeous. And then this one from Canmate is the Marshmallow Finish Powder. I just opened and used this one in a recent J Beauty video, but this one has a very slight pigment to it. So if I need to use a powder to really mattify and like set my makeup, especially for filming, I'm more likely to use this one instead of this one. I just prefer this one a little bit more. It's a little thinner and has that little bit of extra coverage, which is useful for filming, which I realize is like a little bit of a unique circumstance, but that is what I primarily use it for. And then if I'm not using the Can Make one for filming, I do like to use the Laura Mercier. This one also, if I'm like going somewhere and taking photos because it doesn't really tend to have flashback. I know a lot of makeup artists really like using this one. When I used to work in beauty retail, all of the makeup artists always used the Laura Mercier powder for people who are going to events and getting their makeup done because they just felt it was really reliable. The powder is really finely milled. It's a really great setting powder and it lasts you for ages. I've had this for years and I still have so much left. So this one is trusty and handy. And then this one underrated, I feel, is the Tatcha Silk Powder. Kind of like the Laura Mercier, another loose powder, but this one is kind of like the Hourglass one in terms of having like a really healthy glowy finish. This one is not as light of a finish. I feel like when I use this powder, I can kind of like feel it on. It's still very lightweight, but it's got a little bit more weight to it than the Laura Mercier, but it has like just a little bit more of like a glowy kind of healthy finish that just pairs really nicely with some of my foundations and cushions. I just really like the way this one looks and I've been really enjoying it. So we're not really doing a lot of decluttering here, which is good. I'm really glad that I have a lot of products that I'm enjoying and that are working well for me. I have realized that I just don't really love this one, but I like and use all of these for a bunch of different reasons. So these ones are staying and this one can get decluttered. Contour products plus a bonus freckle pen from ColourPop because I sit this next to those and I don't really have a freckle pen category. I really like my freckle pen. It's very cute when I want to do freckles. It's a good color and it works well and it lasts well throughout the day. So yay ColourPop freckle pen. I have really enjoyed using this product and I'm going to keep it and I'll just move it aside as we talk about contour. It's just going to go like this. I'm going to keep these ones and declutter this one. I think I mentioned this in last year's makeup declutter video. This is the Fenty Beauty Matchstick in Amber. Fenty Beauty so far is not having a good run in this video, which I feel bad about because I really like the lip gloss when we eventually get there. I think they released some really cool products, but this shade stick, it's just really quite matte. And because of the kinds of products I use, they're very creamy and dewy. I find this doesn't really work well within that regime. It dries down really quickly. I find it quite difficult to blend at times and it kind of looks just like a line on my face. I have had people mention that the pan like cream version of this is a lot more of like a creamy formula that I would enjoy more. So I might investigate that, but for the moment I am just gonna declutter this. I use it, but I always find myself like 
not liking the outcome. And then these two are very similar. This is the contour and this is the too cool for school contour. Honestly, there's not a huge difference between them. You probably don't need both. I just so happen to have both and I like both. It's not a particular area I'm like really interested in, but I do use these both from time to time. Uh, and I don't really use this one. And now I won't use this one. <laughs> so that's that. I, uh, I didn't realize I had this many blushes. I will say blush is one of my favorite categories. I love blush. I think blush is so fun. And there are some here that I really, really love and enjoy. And there are some here that I don't really use. I don't really particularly care for. So I think we might be getting some, some cut down here. This is a lot to look at all at once. So let's break it down by formula and that should help a little bit. Alrighty, here are all the liquid and cream blushes. And I would say these have been the formula of the year. This one in particular has been such a surprise, like banger for me. This is the Flower Beauty Gel Crush Lip and Cheek, specifically in the shade Strawberry Crush. You can see this is like a bit gross, but I, I use it a lot. I think it's a really pretty, like kind of sheer strawberry, like baby pink. It's really affordable. I really, really like this one. Definitely keeping that. This one, I think I've spoken about before. This is the 3CE Sheer Liquid Blusher in the shade Side Piece. This is like one of my favorite blushes of all time. I feel like it just has the perfect tone on me where it's like, not too like candy cool tone pink, but still has like a very natural kind of flush to it. Um, lasts really well, has a great gorgeous dewy finish. Like I'm obsessed with this. The blush cushion from 3CE is nice as well. I don't like it as much as the like liquid one just in terms of application and like finish, but this one is really easy in a pinch as well because it has the like cushion applicator. So you can like really quickly like dab some blush on and blend it out. Then we have Cloud Paint, the Ally Cheek UV that I talked about recently. And this one from I'm, this is the Bare Cheek. I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this, but if you want like a super natural, like no makeup makeup liquid cream blush, this one is really cute. This one as well, this Blush Go wand is probably the most pigmented of my liquid blushes. I just use like a really small amount. And then I have this one, which is from a K beauty brand called Necker, I think. I don't reach for this one that much. And I'm trying to remember why it is that I do that. I think, okay, the lavender color is really pretty, but I have a feeling when you blend it out, it kind of becomes like the color changes and turns a little like peachy. So I'm gonna give this one another go just to check that theory. But just know this one could be on the chopping block, okay? Because it could be that this is not great. I will try and use this again soon so that I can find out if it does do that. And if it does do that, I'll declutter it. If it doesn't do that, then it will stay. And then this one is so cute. It's a Lily by Red Cheek Balm. I have it in the shade number two. It's a very bright candy pink. I hope it doesn't look weird on the inside. It is sometimes a little bit hard to open. Ugh. Okay, not too heinous. The color is so pretty when it's blended out. I don't have anything else like it. I have been really enjoying using this quite a bit recently. And then this one, I actually went back and forth on this in the last declutter. And I feel like maybe we can all see that, that could potentially be a trend. Because I would say if there's something in a declutter at any point where I'm like, oh, I'm not really in love with it, but like, we'll see. The chances of it being decluttered the next time around are very, very high. And this is the case with this one. I think I nearly decluttered it last time. And honestly, like I've used it a couple of times. And now that I am more aware of color theory, content drinking challenge uh, in asterisk dangerous. Every time I mention color theory, uh, take a little sip. Um, no, but <laughs> getting color analysis done and kind of diving into that and understanding it has been such a useful tool for me um, to understand and put a reason to why I didn't like something that I couldn't previously articulate. And this cream blush just blends out very like orangey on me, um, very kind of brown and doesn't really do a lot for me. Whenever I use this, wish I used something else. So I am going to declutter this one this time round. Yeah, look, I did say that I'm having a bit of a cream blush moment 
I am actually pleased that I like and have been using so many of these products. Um, and I'm glad that I have reaffirmed that this doesn't work for me. So that's the first bit of the blush. Let's see how the rest do. Okay, these are all of the powder blushes and a couple of palettes as well. I think I'm going to start with these. This Peri Peri blush palette, I just haven't really used. And I've used it a few times and I felt that it just wasn't amazing. I prefer my other powder blushes to these ones. Um, you can kind of see they're like three slightly different tones of blush. I don't know if anyone else is like this, but if I have a palette of blushes and I don't like all of them, um, and in this one I only really like this middle one here, these two I'm kind of ambivalent towards, I find that I just don't gravitate towards this palette generally. Again, this is just me being picky and I don't like holding onto products I'm not really using and I just don't really use this. I kind of thought that I might find it useful for travel because it's got like three shades and it's like quite lightweight and portable but I haven't taken it traveling because I prefer using like little tiny cream blushes that are really lightweight. I think it's pretty and the products are fine but they're not really stand out to me so I will declutter this. Speaking of other products I haven't reached for recently I have this blush from Peri Pera and this one from Numbing. This one, I swear I forget that I have, which isn't good. I don't like it when I forget that I have something, but it's very small and tends to get buried under like other products. And with the way I store things, if it gets sandwiched or stacked behind something else, I just like don't see it. It's a very particular color. I just watched it actually in between takes. It's, and you can't see it anymore. And that's because it's very light pigment and about the same color as my actual skin color. The formula is actually quite nice. As I understand it, this would be like a highlightery kind of blush or a blush to like blend things out and lighten them if you didn't have the same skin tone as me. And I kind of thought I would maybe use it to like blend out other blush shades and kind of like do stuff with them. But to be honest, I, I don't really do that <laughs> and I haven't done that. And if I do want to like tone down or sheer out a blush that I'm wearing, I tend to do it with like another color or a translucent or slightly tinted face powder. It's cute, but as like a color product, this doesn't really do anything for me. So I'm gonna declutter this one. And this one is another case of a product that I recently was like, maybe I'll get rid of this. But I was like, no, I think maybe I'll use it. And then I didn't. I think when it sits in this packaging, it does look a lot more like tan orangey than it does like when you open it and it's more of like a nudie color. But this is just a bit more of that like muted, peachy warm tone color that I just don't think really flatters me. I just don't reach for this compared to other things. Simple as that. The color just doesn't work for me as nicely as other things that fill the same purpose as this. Like these two from Romand. The names in the background are Korean, but yes, pretty confident this is strawberry milk and that is a blueberry chip. I love these shades. I use them a lot, especially this one. I can use sort of in place of something like this, but you can see it's got a little bit more pigment to it. It's a little bit more kind of cool toned, a little bit more pinky. So it's really nice to blend out more pigmented blushes with this. Or if I really want like a sheer light amount of blush, then using this is great. Love this shade. And this one is just like an amazing everyday blush shade. It's muted, so it's not like overly bright and it matches really well with like a lot of different lip colors if I want the lip color to be the focus because it is more muted and it's not like super statement-y on me. It just works really well as like kind of a everyday cool toned blush. So I really, really like both of these. I think the price point is great. I like the formula. If you haven't tried the Roman blushes, they have a bunch of different colors. So definitely keeping those. I said I was starting off with palettes, didn't I? And then I just completely went in another direction. But let's talk about this palette from Hourglass. I need to reach for this more. <laughs> I do, because I love this formula. Um, and honestly, these powders are gorgeous. The only one in this six that I probably won't use sort of going forward is this one, which I feel like is kind of ominous because I kind of just said before that if I don't like colors in a palette, I won't use them. But especially when we talk about highlighters soon, there are exceptions to this. And I do like and use these colors, these three. And I do like this blush as well. Let me just check what that looks like on my fingertip. Is that more like berry? -y? Yeah. This is like a kind of berry muted color. You can kind of see it's like very soft as opposed to like, I was worried it was going to be more of like a warm toned kind of berry, but that's like a very soft berry color. So I use like these four um, and then I just don't 
use these two as much. I still like this one. It's kind of like a champagne-y, shimmery, highlighty shade, um, but I use it more. But these would be my most used shades. But honestly, like these palettes are just really gorgeous and I really like hourglass powder formulas. I have taken this traveling previously. I am about to go traveling again for quite a while and it's a pretty long trip. Because I don't use two of the shades when it comes to like really streamlining travel, I feel like this doesn't make as much sense as taking like one blush and one highlighter or two blushes and one highlighter that I really, really, really like and use all of. I don't know. I just really like this palette. I need to use it more. I just don't reach for it because of the way I set up my drawer. So maybe I just need to like change the drawer setup, but actually I'm moving out. So that's going to be changed anyway, but I really like this. I love the formulas. I also just love the packaging. Like even though it's a bit gross, ATM, please don't judge me. But the pink metallic is so my vibe. Um, I am going to keep this. I just need to use it more often, but I don't not use it because I don't like it. I don't not use it because of where I put it in the drawer and that's my own fault. Speaking of hourglass, let's talk about this blush. I, part of me wants to declutter this. This is the ambient lining blush in the shade Mood Exposure. It's a really pretty like beigey nude pink blush. It's very natural. I just have been really enjoying like color on my cheeks as of recent and like those really cool toned kind of bright baby pink so I haven't been reaching for this but this is a really beautiful shade and in a similar vein to that is this one from NARS this is the shade deep throat hold for laughter ha 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 I do have broken packaging on this one which does kind of bother me but I'm trying to not let it bother me because it's not really a big deal but this one is really like peachy and kind of vibrant I do like this one there is like another NARS one that I've seen and I'm like oh that looks really pretty and like something I would maybe get a little bit more wear out of but I have this one and I like it so keeping both of these oh you can see how the packaging is a bit yeah I don't love that then we have these two very ornate blushes from Flower Nose I've been really liking this shade of the Strawberry Rococo blush that is number two pure rhyme and I also got this one kind of recently and I haven't actually used it yet because I wanted to like take some photos or a video of it before I use it which I just need to do it so I start using it. But this one, like, are you kidding? That's so pretty. That's such a me kind of color. And that is 03 Silky Ribbon. I really like the formula of these. They're kind of similar to the Romand blush in that they're like a more matte, like blurring kind of formula, but the colors are really nice and just work really well. You know what guys? I was actually just looking at my palm and seeing the reflect from that NARS blush and it's coming up very gold. I'm not really a gold gal. Um, hmm. Maybe I was wrong. Let me swatch it like more down here. Um, it's pretty in isolation, but I don't know if I actually think that really works for me anymore. Maybe. I don't know if you can like see in the lighting on the fingertip, but it's coming off like really like yellowy goldy in a certain reflect and I did not pick up on that but now I'm like oh that's actually quite yellowy goldy mm. I think it might be time to say goodbye to this one uh, <laughs> okay, that it just completely broke that time cool just to clarify I have held on to this for about like two three years with broken packaging um, that doesn't really bother me, but the combined nature of me realizing maybe, maybe no, and also broken packaging is sort of like sending me some signs and signals. So I think I'm going to put it in the declutter pile. And if I feel in like the next week or two that I'm like, oh, I really miss that NARS blush, then I'll keep it. But I have a feeling that won't be the case, especially because let me just show you this one. This is also like a more corally kind of color but it doesn't have the gold shift in it, but it is like similarly kind of like, okay, no, actually that, that looks like a completely different color. Never mind, that's a completely different color. But also I've been really liking wearing the shade and when you put it next to a shade that I feel like suits me really well, um, it looks kind of wild on the inner of my arm because this is where I am like palest. But I have been wearing these kinds of more candy, cool tone pink shades more often um, and they work quite well. They do not look 
crazy and kooky and wild on my cheeks. And if I want a more like naturally kind of blushy color, like more neutral, more like neutral nudie kind of color, I have this like hourglass one, which let me just get it here so you can see is actually, whoa, hang on. <laughs> I feel like, did I do this last year? I'm getting deja vu. Actually, that's like really brownie. Guys, I feel like this happened last year. I feel like I swatched this hourglass blush on the inside of my arm last year and was like, why is that brown? Oh no, am I about to get rid of another blush as well? Why is that so brown? Damn it, now I don't know what to do. Huh, I don't know if you can see. That's the hourglass one. That's the NARS one. That's the 3CE one that I got kind of recently. What the heck? <laughs> am I about to declutter this hourglass one as well? Maybe. Damn it. I like how it looks in the pan, but it looks really orange on me there. Just for comparison, this is like one of my most worn blushes of recent time. Oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. Now I'm not saying that if you get your color analysis done and you get the colors you need to like get rid of things. What I am saying though is that I realized how much I liked these sorts of colors and how much I felt like they really worked for me and thus colors that were on the warm side didn't actually work that well for me. And looking there, that hourglass one is really, really warm compared to what I would say is one of my more like chill, kind of like soft pink blushes. Huh. I think I'm going to declutter that hourglass one. This happened last year, but I didn't feel like I accepted it. I was like that, surely not. But looking at that there, that's like really like a brownie nude kind of color. And I do feel like that little hint of like pink. It doesn't have to be like this candy sort of pink. It can be more of like a corally kind of color. Okay, I guess we're decluttering these two because I don't love that shade when I've actually like swatched it out. Hmm. Anyway, here are some other ones I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep this one. I think I already talked about this one, but I'm keeping that one. This one from Dior, you can see, is a very <laughs> bright, almost like purpley kind of candy pink blush color. This formula, I feel like, when I learned this, I feel like it made a lot of sense. This formula is described as like a slurry formula, meaning it's not like as dusty as a typical powder. Like when you put your brush into it and not a lot of powder kicks up, you kind of have to dig it in there. I wouldn't try to like a cream blush, but maybe like a matte cream blush. I use like a smaller, more densely packed brush and I like really just tap it and like really slowly like tap to build it up. It's like, it's just not like an easy formula compared to like, the Romand ones. These ones are really just easy. You can just like swipe and go. This one I had to kind of learn and I still feel like I'm like perfecting my technique with this one, but this is really pretty. Again, it's similar to that really candy pink cream blush in the heart shape. It's a very similar color, like a bright Barbie pink. And I love using this. And I love actually using this with something like the flower nose that's like a little bit more muted, having this as a base and then putting a little pop of this or alternatively doing this one and then blending out the sides of it with this one from flower nose. I think it just looks so cute. And like the packaging is kind of a sleigh. I'm not really like a Logomania girly, but there's something about the pink Dior Logomania vibe with like the silver. It kind of gets to me. It's very sleigh and to my aesthetic sensibilities. <laughs> and then last three, I don't really reach for this one as much anymore. I do think it's a nice product and like a great budget buy, especially if you go to Thailand, which is where I pick this up from. This is the Cute Press Glow Fitty. Oh, I suppose it's like, oh, confetti, glow fitty. It's got gold and silver shimmer in it and it comes out really like metallic. It's pretty, but I have other pink metallic products that I like more, which is kind of a bizarre statement. So it's like a glowy pink, almost like a highlighter blush combo. And this is nice, but I don't like it as much as two other ones that I use way, 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 way more that basically do the same thing, but I just think have a nicer tone to it and formula and texture. But this is still solid, but I am gonna declutter it. One of the glowy pink blushes I really like is this from Bobbi Brown. I've had this for ages. This is the Shimmer Brick in Rose. I feel like this is such a like legacy product from Bobbi Brown. You can see mine's pretty well worn and used. I've had this for years now and I still feel like there's so much left. But the way this combines into a very sheer wash of like blushy rosy color that's not overly metallic. It's just like a really pretty sheen. And I can put this on top of a lot of other blush. I can wear it alone. I just really enjoy having it in my little collection. And I do reach for it from time to time. And it just, 
It's a very no fuss product. It always looks nice. And then this one is from Can Make. It is their powder cheek and you can see it's like kind of a lilac-y shade, but it doesn't come out lilac-y purple on the skin. The way it looks on my skin, it comes out like a soft, gentle pink. But out of interest, like that's it compared with the Dior one. It's a little more subdued. It's not as bright, it's a bit more muted. It's less like straight up blue pink and more of like it's purple. You can see that it's purple, but this comes out quite naturally somehow on me. It works really well and I need to use it more often. I don't use it as much as I would like, but I feel like with this sort of declutter, hopefully I will use it more. This kind of sounds like famous last words, doesn't it? But there are two powder blushes that I didn't count on decluttering and now I am. So that has taken a few more out of the, you know, out of the running. So those are the powder blushes. These are the ones that are staying and these ones here are getting decluttered. And then last up in drawer number one, we have highlighters. And I feel like I'm pretty confident about which ones I wanna keep, which ones I wanna declutter with this one, because I feel like I have some favorites with my highlighters that I tend to go to. And then when I use the other ones, I'm always thinking about the favorites. So I think this should be pretty clear. Oh, actually, you know how I was talking before about palette where I use like some of the colors and not so much the others. This Dior palette, I don't know what it's called exactly. It's the Backstage Glow Face Palette. I have gotten a lot of use out of this, but I don't know if you can tell, mainly just from these two. And actually, surprisingly, I feel like I haven't made as much of a dent in them as I feel like I have because I use this all the time, um, specifically this one and this one. These two I use occasionally, but just not as often. These are a little bit more like on the warm tone side. This is actually a very pretty champagne, but I am just quite fair. So anything like around this tone and kind of deeper is not necessarily a highlight on me because the base pigment is sometimes like a little darker than my actual skin tone. So I tend to use this one a little bit more like on the eyes as more of like a reflective kind of champagne-y color. And this one is again also a really pretty color. I just don't wear these two as much, but these two I'm obsessed with. Specifically this highlighter is incredible and this as like a blush topper is so gorgeous. The formula for this is really beautiful because it's not like super metallic. It's more very like fine and glowy, more like wet look almost, but they're really easy to use. I just, I love these. I feel like there's been a lot of hype about this like palette and this formula. And there are some luxury products where, you know, you hear about them and you're like, is it actually good? But I feel like this is actually really, really good. I love it. It works very well for the type of makeup I like to do. So I'm definitely keeping this. I love this. I've even traveled with this, which considering I only really use these two mainly is kind of wild, but I love these two so much. If they ever release them as like a duo like this, that would be amazing. <laughs> but you know, I'm even just like, you know what? It's fine. Even if I don't use all four, because these two are just so good to me. So I love, love, love this palette. I'm kind of tempted by the other one. That's also like pinky tones, but it might be a little bit peachy. I haven't seen it in person. Um, but I am happy with just using this one because I love it so much. So definitely keeping that. And then for every day, I mainly use these two hiders. This is MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Light Scapade. I love this like beautiful, like pearly, beigey kind of effect it has where it looks all like marbled and like different colors. It just comes off as like a very pretty neutral, vanilla highlight but it's very soft i find it like blends into the skin very well it doesn't look very highlightery just like a soft glow i've had this for a really long time and i don't know i feel like i just never declutter it i just always use it i always come back to it i think it's really great and then this one from ColourPop, looking a little worse for wear I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of, oh, yep, that just crumbled all over the desk. This is the ColourPop Super Shock Highlighter in Flexitarian, I think. Yeah, this is one of the highlighters. It looks really um, champagne-y in the pan, but it's so like reflective on the cheek that it's like a really bright reflective kind of color. And the way it blends out is like super thin and it just blends into the skin. And yeah, I just, I think if you are on the, fairer side you probably have this problem where like sometimes like depending on the way you tilt your head your highlight can kind of look like a streak of color on your skin if the like base pigment is like a little bit deeper and i love using this for a more natural look because it has the cream formula so it just blends in really seamlessly with my makeup very well loved and will continue to be loved because the formula is still still banging just tried to swipe that little crumb off the desk and now my hands are all i don't know if you can see they're like but that that's what it looks like. Just like a gorgeous 
reflecty glow. Then out of these ones, these two here are my sort of more coloured reflecty highlights. This one's the Romand one from the Hanbok collection that they did. And this one I got more recently from Cezanne, which is a J Beauty brand. Both of these are really pretty. Both of these are really pretty and have more of that like iridescent slightly. This one's more pinky and this one's almost like lilac-y. But what I like about these in particular, because I do like a good like iridescent sort of shifty highlight, is they do also look quite natural. The actual colour is quite soft. Just generally, I've kind of been feeling like I do enjoy sort of like softer makeup. And so both of these I feel like work really well for that because a lot of those like iridescent shifty highlighters can be like very metallic-y, have really strong colours. And these two are just very easy to work in with a bunch of different looks without being like super statement-y. So I can get that kind of like little colour shift like fun in, but it's not like super blinding, like really statement-y, if that makes sense. Because the f I feel like the Romand one is looking kind of like beige but it does have like a pink shift, which is a little bit hard to pick up. But again, I like it because it's so subtle. It's kind of like giving like ethereal fairy princess vibes. And this one from Suzanne looks kind of intense in the pan, but on the skin also comes off very soft. So I really like both of these. And these are kind of like my more like fun highlighters if I want to like jazz up a look a bit. And then of the three we have left here, I have the Clio Prism highlighter, this one from Zen and the Fenty Beauty. I think I am gonna hold on to the Fenty Beauty just because it's quite different than the other ones because it's more of like a glittery one. And again, it's like that really nice, like white opaly color that I really enjoy. And it's pretty as a topper. I just don't reach for it that often because I always find that like, I overdo it. And for me, I always do my highlighter kind of at the end of my routine, like just before I do lip color. And I feel like it's always the place where I kind of just am like, ooh, what if I add like a little more? And what if I add a little more? And this is one of those highlighters that I feel like definitely does that. Not in a bad way. You just gotta be, you know, selective about how you use its power. But this is also really pretty on the eye. It's just more of like an occasional kind of highlighter because it is so like glittery and balmy and gorgeous, but I do like it. I just don't use it every day and that's okay. And then we have these two and these two are actually both uh, pretty good. I don't really have any complaints about them. The issue is just that I don't use them as much as the other ones because they kind of fall into very similar categories or purposes, at least to me, than the other ones. And I like the other ones better. So this one is from Clear. It's the Prism Highlighter and it's kind of like a jewel one, if I can get it open. So one is a little bit more shimmery. One is a little bit more glittery. These are really pretty champagne-y colors. I especially got use out of this one that was a softer one but I find they just, I don't know, they don't, I don't rustle my jimmies in quite the right way compared to some of the other ones. Like if I'm gonna do a more natural highlight, I'm gonna use the ColourPop or the MAC one. If I wanna do something more blinding, I'll use like the Dior one or the Romand one is similarly kind of like that pinky color, but the Romand one has like a cool shift. It's good, I just don't find myself reaching for it. And similar story with the Zen one here. This is, I think it's actually a Hong Kong brand. I could be wrong about that, but I've actually gotten quite a bit of wear out of this. It's a very pretty like straight champagne color and it's very metallic, it's very glowy. I just find the color like tone of this one, I don't enjoy as much as some others. It's a little bit more like peachy. It's a little bit more yellowy. Like it's got a bit more of that like saturation to it when I prefer something um, a little softer, I suppose. It's a really great product. I just find myself, it's one of those ones where I use it and I'm kind of like, nah, I kind of wish I used the other one. Um, not that this isn't great, but just like not my preference, if that makes sense. Uh, that one's so fingerprinty, I apologize. But um, yeah, I'm gonna declutter these two and I'm going to hold on to these ones. And with that, we are all done with the first drawer and let's see what we are decluttering. I am quickly losing the light. So we are gonna finish up for that session and we'll come back and do the second drawer, which is like all things eye region eye stuff. Okie dokie, we are on to drawer number two. I feel like the first drawer was a little bit harder than I anticipated it being, but I feel, I feel good about drawer number two. I feel like I know which products I use, which products I don't. This is round one. I'm going to separate it out, but we have all of my eyeliners and brow products. So let me just organize this so it's like a little less uh, like this and we'll dive into it. Okay, I thought I had more brow products than this, but apparently no. In saying that, I probably thought I had more, but I do tend to use up my brow products like pretty 
quickly because I do my brows like every time I do my makeup. You know what I mean? They're like the staple kind of products as opposed to like different eyeshadow palettes or different lip colors. Unless a brow product is like not great, um, I tend to just like go through it and use it up pretty quickly. We got a little bit of variety of different kind of eyebrow looks and tones kind of going on. So let's just jump into it. I am going to declutter this because I've had this for way too long. Um, it's like completely uh, like cracked and dehydrated. I think I've had this for like years, like years. This is the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. I feel like it's, you know, a classic, uh, very famous makeup item. I actually have no complaints about it. It's just that I just don't really use it a lot with how I do my makeup. Like you'll see from the products I'm about to talk about, but I tend to prefer something like a bit more like low maintenance and quick because my eyebrows are already pretty big and bushy so I'm usually just like adding a couple of little like strokes in to give it a bit more of like a refined structure and a gel and then I kind of like move on <laughs> so this product I think is really great if you really need to like add a lot of brow hair and it's very long lasting mine is like very 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 expired and also not the type of product I really use a lot you know then we have a couple of brow gels i have this one from deja vu which i've only tried one time i just filmed with this like very recently so i need to try it out more but because i wasn't like super positive on it when i filmed and recently when i've been doing my makeup it's to like go to like an event or something and i'm like yeah i can risk this not being a good makeup day um so i, I need to give this a proper try because I think it's a good product. I just don't know if I've worked out how it works for me slash if it is a product that makes sense for me. So I'll keep it for now just to like give it a go, but it could be on the out very quickly. <laughs> and then I have these two from Emco Beauty. There is the Emco Beauty Brow Laminate Sculpt and Set and then the Extend Brows Treatment Gel Clear. I like both of these. I think they're both good, but I do prefer the Extend Brows Treatment Gel in Clear. I got this one more recently and I've just been really impressed by it. And it just works again for the type of makeup I like to do. Not to be like dramatic and be like coming to terms with the type of makeup I like to do. I think just being like thoughtful as to what's like popular, but also what kind of consumer am I? Because this is very quick and easy, little like low maintenance gel, gives medium hold. I just swipe it through and I'm done. And then I can add like a little bit of brow pencil to, you know, fill out my brows. I just, it works so well for how I like to do my makeup. But I have also used this a lot. This is the Brow Laminate Sculpt and Set. And this is also a really great brow gel. If you have really unruly brows and you like that laminated look where they're really like set in place, I think this is really great. It's just the sort of product where if you use a little bit too much um, and then you're like brushing it through your brows and then it can kind of like go into your foundation. Like I don't normally do my brows first. I normally do like my base first and then do my brows. But with this product, I tend to do my brows first. So I like the formula and the formula is really great at what it does, but this one just works a little bit better for me in terms of like how I like to do my makeup. But I like them both. I do think I will hold on to them both because I always find myself running out of brow gel. And this, because this one's newer to me, I, I do feel like this one has like the superior hold. This one's more of like my quick and easy. This one's like if I'm doing more of like a glam look, if that makes sense. So yeah, they're both great for different reasons. So I'm gonna hold on to them both. And then honestly, as I'm looking at these, I think I'm gonna keep all my brow pencils because they're all slightly different tones. You can't see me right now, but you probably have seen me earlier in this video or before generally. Um, but I have brown hair, which is my natural hair color, but underneath my hair is still like the platinum that I used to have. So I've been like tinting my hair to match my natural color, but that means it kind of like washes out and I kind of go through phases of having like a darker brunette that's more cool toned and then like a slightly more like neutral brunette. I know you're all fascinated in this uh, journey of mine, but basically what it means is like sometimes I prefer having a little bit more of like an ashy color. Sometimes I want something that's like a little bit more of a softer brown. It just kind of depends. The Tony Moly Lovely Eyebrow Pencil is a great budget buy. It doesn't have like the best staying power, but I think it's like less than $5 or something like that. So pretty good. I love the Ramond Han Han All Flat Brow. It's so easy to use. The color C2 Grace Taupe from Ramond in their brow range, like across a few different products, is like my perfect brow color. I love it. And I have used up the thinner one um, and I like emptied it. So love, love, love that one. The Peri Peri one, okay, maybe I, mm, I might declutter this one. This one's like really gray. Um, and while I do like having something a bit more gray, I find this one is almost like a little too gray for me at times, um, where it's like 
probably would suit someone who has like black hair a little bit better. Like it doesn't have a hint of like color to it. It's like straight up gray. I feel like I used this recently and I was like, oh, <laughs> like <laughs> I kind of had to like mix it in with another one. But in saying that the formula is nice. This is a speedy skinny brow. Um, nothing wrong with the formula. It's a great little brow pencil and again, really affordable, but I think I'm going to pass this one on. And then these two are great as well. This is the mood, um, brow pencil it does not say what it is in English and I cannot read Korean and the Cezanne super slim eyebrow I got recently I love the like retractable pencil design um yeah these are all pretty solid actually yeah, I'm also going to declutter this. <laughs> I love how I was like I'm going to keep all of them and then as I'm using them I'm like yeah probably not though hey the Tony Molly one is good I just find that it doesn't last as well like on my brows and I don't like it when you know the tail end of my brow kind of wears off uh it's not great but all of these i really like so i'm gonna keep all these and then these two i'm just gonna gently declutter and that's actually pretty solid i will get through these pretty quickly Alrighty, shall we do mascaras because i definitely kept some of these for the purpose of this video instead of getting rid of them because they're mascaras and again that's another thing where you kind of like once it reaches the end of its lifespan and it starts like getting dried out or it starts being empty you are kind of like okay time to move on um i wouldn't normally have this many in my stash like open concurrently maybe three <laughs> maybe half of them but yeah i just wanted to you know be able to chat about them so i will do that now first up i want to talk about the lancome lush idol i have always loved lancome mascaras my mum is like a big Lancome lady. You know what I mean? Like I grew up with Lancome as like the makeup that I would steal to play with uh, from my mum. But the Lancome mascaras, I just feel like have this really beautiful effect. And I always really love the way they look. Like they just look like really princessy and lush. Um, and the Lush Doll, I also really liked. I stopped using it a while ago because I ran out of it slash it dried out quite a while ago because I think I started using it like around this time last year. I do really like Lancome mascaras. They tend to be quite like lightweight, but still give like volume and length. I don't know, they're really good like all rounders for my type of lashes. And I always really like how they look on. It is unfortunately, you know, it has come to the end of its lifespan uh, quite a few months ago, but just wanted to give it a little love. Um, I will be decluttering it but not because it wasn't good, but because it's done. <laughs> Again, I did the Japanese makeup video really recently. This is the Deja Vu Lash Up. I've only used it a couple of times, so I can't really give you a full review, but so far I think it's kind of fun. It's a little bit different to what I normally use. I've only been using this like quite recently, so I don't really have like conclusive thoughts, only like, you know, first impressions, I suppose. It's a little bit different from some of the other Japanese mascaras I've tried. Um, in terms of like the finish and the look, but I think it's cool and I understand why it's a bestseller. So I'm gonna keep using that and trying it out. Uh, this is another one that has been uh, kind of done for a little while, but I love this mascara while I was using it. This is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise and this is in the brown color and it's so pretty. This is like real princess Bambi lash vibes. It's just like very voluminous, very pretty. And the brown color, I don't know if you can, is gonna be gross, we'll find out. That's okay. The brown color is like a really pretty, like, I don't know, like a taupey brown chocolatey, but with like almost like a touch of purple and like taupe gray kind of vibes. The color of this was just really nice. And I do like wearing a brown mascara for more like day-to-day -day looks. Like it's just kind of pretty and a little bit softer than like, that more like carbon black vibe. I really like this and I would probably repurchase this um, or try some other brown mascaras from L'Oreal line. Speaking of brown mascaras, this one has been my go-to recently. This is the Emco Beauty Extend Lash in black brown. I have been working with Emco Beauty. They have sent me some things to test and try, but this is one of the ones where I like got it and I was like, oh, this is really good. I think this is the best seller for them. Maybe potentially their best selling product full stop. I'm not hundred percent certain, but I really, really like it. I just think the black brown shade is really pretty. It's like a very easy day-to-day -day mascara. I really like the effect it gives me on my lashes. It's actually pretty easy to remove, which I don't mind a more like difficult to remove mascara, but just, you know, something like lower maintenance for day-to-day, -day, but also gives like a really good effect. Um, and again, the price point is really good on this one. So yeah, they also do it in a black. So they have the black and the black brown. I really like this one. I think it's uh, it's fab. Then we have this one. This is the Kill Lash Superproof Mascara. This one has been like a bestseller in Korea. This one is the long curling version. I think they have a couple of other ones. I don't know. I kind of like this one on first impression, but as I used it, it just 
it's not my favorite it's not bad it's just not my favorite the first two or three times you use a mascara are not going to be like representative of the full mascara experience and i kind of say that when i do mascara reviews like if it's the first time i'm using it i'm kind of like okay we'll like see how we go like this is how i feel the first time but it might be different later and i feel like that was the case with this one where the first time i used it i was like oh it like dries kind of like that like soft touch mascara i don't like it when my lashes feel like crispy and depending on what other things the mascara brings to the table i'll take a crispy lash if it can do other things for me but i don't love having a crispy lash and this gives me crispy lash which it didn't really give me the first time it's difficult to remove and i don't really love the effect it just didn't really work for me i don't know i think historically i have not had the best run with korean formulas uh i have liked a lot of japanese ones i've liked a lot of you know western beauty kind of ones both drugstore and luxury but korean mascaras i don't know i feel like i've had a weird run with them and i feel like maybe i'm not getting something because a lot of people really love them but yeah it just you know what i mean it's not like hitting in the quadrants but it's not low maintenance enough to be kind of my daily driver because it's like a little bit crunchy and it's a little bit hard to remove but then i don't like the effect that this has more than i like the one that the other ones do that are high maintenance that don't even have necessarily like the same crispy lash energy it's not like egregiously bad but i don't really like it that much compared to any of the other mascaras i'm using so i'm decluttering this one i'm not jazzed about it and then this one is a classic this is the heroin make long up mascara super waterproof i've tried a few different ones i think i've tried the long plus curl and this is the long up super waterproof I sometimes get confused between the different ones because a lot of the packaging between them is very similar. I thought this might be my favorite one or my favorite, you know, specific one in the line. And I don't think it is. It's still really good though. I think it's not my favorite of the heroin make range. Um, I'm pretty sure long plus curl is my fave, but this one does give a really nice look. I did wear this to a concert last night and uh, it really made my lashes look really nice and big. And juicy but also because it's waterproof if i don't set the area around my eyes with powder then this does like transfer and do mascara smudgies so that's a thing with waterproof mascara if you pick waterproof mascara because you don't want it to smudge on your like upper brow or your like lower under eyes it probably will because waterproof is designed to be removed with oil and your face doesn't produce water it produces oil so the oil will like you know, just gentle little bits of sebum as we all have that your face produces throughout the day could potentially break down the formula of these types of waterproof mascaras. Not all, but quite a few. And this is one of those. So I was obviously getting a little bit sweaty in, uh, in the concert hall. <laughs> so this one did go a little bit smudgy. It did still look really nice though. And if you use the hair and make mascara remover, it comes off pretty easily. The effect is really pretty. I just need to powder when I use it if I am going to get moist so i'm gonna keep that one because then i've got you know my daily driver i've got my kind of like fancy va va vumi one and then i have my new one but i also have some other ones that i picked up in japan that i kind of want to dive into and try um so i might try and you know get through these bad boys first but yeah nice even split to be fair these two were like most definitely done <laughs> before i filmed this video but i just wanted to talk about them because they're cute and nice and fun okay these ones are staying these ones are going and now Eyeliners plus eye primer. I just want to talk about this one eye primer really quickly and get it out of the way. This is the Mecha Max the Transformer nude eye primer. I have kept this because I'm like, I need to have an eye primer. But then I kind of realized recently I, I don't really use eye primer. And if I am going to prime my eye or put a base on it, I tend to use like a concealer instead. So this is a good product, but it's just not one I really tend to use. And then I was like, why am I holding on to it? So totally great, totally solid product, but just I don't know why. I have it if I'm not gonna use it and I have another solution for the reason why I would use it. You know what I mean? So we're gonna declutter that because it's feeling a bit silly. But then we have all the eyeliners. Oh boy, okay. I think I have two white ones here. Oh no, they're all rolling away. No. These are both basically the same thing. I have the MAC Eye Coal in Fascinating, which is like a white one. And I have the REM Beauty uh, Coal Eyeliner Pencil in So Mod. They are both white, designed to be kind of put in your waterline or I suppose doing other cool things. I don't really use white eyeliner every day, but I do use it from time to time. So I'm just gonna hold on to both of these because I honestly could not really give you like in-depth reviews or comparisons of either of these because they're both kind of like once in a blue moon type of products and I will keep them 
And then let's do liquid ones. I have a few different ones here. So I have the Lunar Muted Shade Brush Liner in Fog Grey. This is like a very cool grey kind of liner. But to be honest, the formula of this is very like not opaque, which I suppose is fine because it's trying to be like a soft grey. But I do feel like I have to go over this a lot of times to kind of get the desired look. And it always looks like a little bit patchy because again, it's like a watercolory kind of vibe, which is fine. But with a liquid liner, when you're doing like a line and then you have to go, you know what I mean? Because you're perfecting it, then you'll like overlap on one. So then one bit looks more pigmented than the other. It's just a little bit fussy. The color is really pretty apart from that. But yeah, I think I might actually declutter this. Like I like the color and I like the idea of it, but in practicality, it's not fab. It just always looks a little bit messy. Um, compared to these two, I have the McQueen New York Waterproof Pen Eyeliner. I feel like I got this quite a while ago in the shade Brown Black. This is a really great brown liquid liner. It's a brush tip as opposed to like a felt tip. I'm not a big felt tip fan. I much prefer brush liners, but I think it is also just because I learned how to do eyeliner with brush liners. So I kind of find it hard to go back the other way. But this one is a very nice pigmented dark chocolatey brown and it's super affordable as well. I also really like the Flower Nose eyeliner. Again, this is a brush tip. It is in the brown shade. I feel like this is really slept on. I think this is one of their best products. The packaging is a little bit more simple compared to like their blushes and things, but I think this is really good. And if you were gonna order with them, like I would recommend picking this up because I just think it's a banger. They have it in black as well. And they also have like a shimmery color, which I haven't tried, but I've been using this a lot. It's just a little bit of a softer color and a little bit finer and a little bit less pigmented than the McQueen one. This one is like more of like a, you know, we're doing a real liquid liner vibe. And this one is just like a little bit more chill. <laughs> is that a good descriptor? This one's just a bit more chill. I don't know if that really helps, but yeah, these two are both great. These are like my liquid liners as of recent. And then we have a bunch of like pencil and like gel eyeliners. I think I'm gonna keep all of them except this one, which is a really great formula, but another example of like, I have used this a few times recently and been like, this color is not great. This is the Clear Sharp So Simple Waterproof Pencil Liner in the shade Brown, but I would describe this as quite a like ready, like it's, it's quite warm toned. I don't know, it just has like a tone to it that looks a little weird on me uh, and probably on a very minute scale that only I recognize. But I was going to hold on to this until I got this one, which is the Can Make Creamy Touch Liner, which is very similar in having like a really small tip and being very fine. But I like the color of this one a lot more. Actually, it really, really reminds me of the Hourglass Skinny Eyeliner Pencils. And I really like that eyeliner because it was super fine tip, but it was a little pricey because I went through it so quickly. So if you liked the old Hourglass eyeliners, or maybe they still sell them, I don't know. But if you like those, this is like a lot like that, especially with like the way it like twists up. It's feeling very, very similar, suspiciously so I feel. Because I have this one, which I like a lot more and basically does the same thing as this. But if you are looking for um, a really long wearing eye pencil, that is really thin. They do have this in a bunch of shades and I would actually pick this up in another shade. It's a really good product. Um, I just don't like the color and it's been irking me for a while now. So not a not recommendation. And then these ones, the Pixi Endless Silky Eye Pens are great. This is my only black gel liner and I don't use black. And I have been on a bit of a brown eyeliner kick, but every now and then I do need a black. And sometimes actually I'll do this one and then like a dark brown powder shadow on top of it. But this is just like a really deep, beautiful, smooth black eyeliner. I think it's really great. The Pixi Eye Pencils, they're all actually really great, but the but I just have the black one, another clear eyeliner. Um, this one is not as fine of a tip. It's like a little bit more chunky, but again, pretty easy to work with. I use this one quite a lot because it's like kind of just chill. I kind of just like put a little bit on the outer eyes and like smudge it out a little bit. And this one is a nicer brown kind of gray color that I enjoy. The Remand eyeliner um, in the shade Ebony Taupe, again, is very like natural kind of thin liner. I love doing this for like no makeup makeup looks. And then also the Mersey First Gel Eyeliner. This is in the shade Charcoal Brown. This is like not quite as pigmented or creamy as some other ones, but it's kind of like, again, a very like, but the color is nice. And I don't know, I kind of just go for this for like a soft chill look. The other ones are like a little bit more precise, a little bit more for drawing like, you know, 
precise wings and these are more for like just a very bit of like soft definition and then like using a brush to kind of like smudge it out a bit I don't know so yeah we are keeping all of these bad boys and we're decluttering these bad boys okay let us talk about eye glitters I was gonna say like single eyeshadows and then also glitters but then I kind of realized all of my single eyeshadows are pretty much also all glitters as well so yeah this is like the glittery fun section and I think I'm pretty sure what's gonna hip hop happen here but let's find out as we talk it through I'm just gonna put these aside and we'll just talk about the like liners here got a bunch of little eye glitters hanging out here and essentially it's kind of gonna go like this I think in that I'm gonna keep all of these <laughs> and I'm gonna declutter these two and funnily enough these are just the least too glittery and these are just all very glittery <laughs> Eye glitters are a product where I'm like, I don't, I don't really use them day to day, but I love them and I think they're pretty and I like wearing them and feeling like a pretty, pretty princess, angel, fairy, princess, mermaid, princess, fairy, angel. These are all pretty different, except for these two. These two are really, really similar, but even then they're still different. We have the Mood Dreamy Glitter and the 3C Eye Switch. I will always recommend this 3C Eye Switch in the shade Double Note. I have had this for way too long, but it continues to be fine and not smell weird or look weird and it performs the same as when I got it, so shrug, I'm gonna keep it. Particularly in the shade Double Note, just has the prettiest, chunkiest holographic glitters. You put it on your under eye, it does not move. They're amazing. And then I have another one from 3C. This is the Maison Kitsune collab, but it is just the eye switch in the shade Petal. The Flower Nose one I just got recently. I was kind of worried because it looks really like peachy orangey in, but on the eye, it reflects like more of a lilac-y pinky silver, which is really, really pretty and just like scatters out so gorgeously. Sea Beauty just knows how to do glitters. The Peri Peri one here is sort of like in between in that it's like, kind of a mix of these like white type of holographic iridescent glitters then it's kind of like the peachy ones as well it's got like a little bit of a hint of a pink to it and it's a really nice like thin liner so yeah i like glitter these are all pretty they all make me happy and actually it's like the holiday season soon so i just need to start wearing more glitter because like we're literally in the festive season right now i need to be going balls to the walls with these guys and then i have these two glitter pencils or glitter sticks from unleashia I have one in the shade number one thrilled and one in the shade number six wee hours one of them is like a white kind of color and one of them is like a lilac these sort of color i think the formula of these is quite impressive you can draw this onto your eye and they will not budge they just like set so sometimes i'll do like just a glitter crease and that's really cool and fun and pretty i've used both of these quite a few times and i'm always pretty impressed with them and they're really great to just draw on the in a corner or like kind of just underneath your eye. They're really impressive actually. I think they're pretty cool. So I'm gonna keep them as well. And then these two, I will be decluttering. This is the REM Beauty um, like liquid eyeshadow. I just used this a few times. I don't really like the color. It's fine. It's just like, I don't know. I wanted to try it and then I tried it and I was like, this isn't really for me. You know, you know. And this is the Pixi Beauty Liquid Eyeshadow in the shade Chiffon. This is actually really pretty, but unfortunately it's just dried out. Um, I was actually using it the other day and it just wasn't coming out right. The formula had changed. It was dry. It wasn't really applying as I wanted it to. These are really pretty, but they are like a liquid mousse, kind of like the Stila ones sort of, but this is more of like a shimmer formula, but they just dry up. Um, whereas like the more liquidy glitters tend to stay good for quite a while. Unfortunately, I'm gonna declutter this one. It doesn't really work like it used to, so it doesn't make sense to hold on to it. So I'm gonna keep all of this juicy, glittery goodness, and I'm going to declutter these. And then we have our single shadows. Uh, I also pretty much know how this is gonna go down. These bad boys are staying, and these two are gonna skedaddle. I feel like if you've watched previous makeup declutters, I have not decluttered this multiple times in a row because can I just show you like this is such a beautiful shade it's really hard to pick up on camera but it's like green and then like pink it's so so pretty but I just do not use it I keep saying to myself like this is the year where I'm going to use this all the time and then I don't because it's like a very pigmented duochrome metallic shadow but just because it's pretty doesn't mean I have to own it they're great I do love the shadow formula but I just don't use it enough and then this one from Colourpop 
This is the Super Shock Shadow in the shade Frog, which is like, you can see it's so gorgeous, but this formula has just gotten really, really dry. And I find it really hard to get any pigment out of it, even as pretty as it looks in the pen. It's just not creamy like my other ColourPop um, highlighter has maintained its creaminess. It's just, yeah, it's not really, it doesn't work. It's really dry. I just like swipe it and it just doesn't, I'm not getting the payoff that I should be getting, I feel, um, or that I used to get. So I'm going to declutter that one, sadly. But I am going to keep these ones over here. This one from Kaja. This is their Beauty Bento. I really need to get more use out of this. It's super pretty. I'm sure you've seen these like before, but they have like the three different tiers with like the different colors. You have like the pinky kind of champagne-y color, then like more of your like lilac-y pink shimmer. And then down the bottom, I don't use this one as much or I probably won't use it a lot because it's just, ooh, but it's this like berry kind of shimmer. This one is super cute. I need to get more use out of this. These two, if I'm doing like a glossy, glittery, glowy type of lid um, from Addiction Tokyo, I have this one which I've had for ages. And then this one, which I just picked up on my last trip. These are like so pretty, like glowy, glassy, dewy eyeshadow toppers. I am just obsessed with this. This is like obviously a pink one. It looks really bright in the pen, but it shears out to be like this kind of wash of like bubblegum candy pink. It's so pretty. And then this one that I just got is like a silvery kind of color because I've been on a bit of a silver kick, which I know it's like trendy, but I've been a silver girl. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always really happy when something is trending that I already like because then I'm like, yay, brands are going to like make the colors I like. But actually Addiction has been making the shade for ages. And I kind of like said to myself, like next time I go back to Japan, I will pick up another one. Um, so I did that. If you go to Japan or if you get it online through like a buying agent, it's the Addiction uh, Single Shadows. This one is in the shade Miss You More. And this one is Stars Witness. And they are both so pretty. And then we have this one, which actually as I'm holding it, I think I may declutter. There's like a slight, very slight sentimental value. I bought this like the first time I went to Korea. And I remember like a lot of K-beauty YouTubers that I was watching were like raving about these and saying how pretty they were. But this is like a really pretty, like peachy pink, like glittery color. But if I'm being honest, like I think I prefer to use other formulas. Like if I'm going to a shadow formula, I prefer something like these ones. It's like a loose formula. So it's like a little bit finicky because if I do want that like really glittery glow, then I probably would use like my liquid glitters and shimmers. All right, let's have a look at that. Oh, okay. Actually, it's really pretty, but I think the formula has actually expired. It's feeling like a little gunky. So I think I will have to say a fond farewell. That does not feel like how it used to. It's feeling a little funky. Nothing dangerous, you know, but probably not one I want to put around my eye area. Really pretty pigment, but I do have things that are similar to this um, in my collection as well. But I think I will declutter these ones and then I'm going to keep these ones here. Okie dokie, eyeshadow palettes. I have been looking forward to this category because I feel like I have really found some eyeshadow palettes that I super love and enjoy using. And then I have also realized that some of the palettes, while I like them, again, in terms of like working for me, I can be like, okay, maybe not for me, maybe for someone else, maybe a beautiful palette, but maybe not for me. So let's get into it. We're gonna go and organize this a little bit. Just push these ones back a little bit. I have three quads sitting before me. We have a couple here from Romand. This one, like I've broken the packaging. It's like kind of come off, but it still works and is fine. And that's great because I actually love this quad. This is the, uh, I'm not exactly sure. I want to say it's the buckwheat, the dry buckwheat palette. I'm not a hundred percent certain, but as you can see, very like kind of neutral, like classic brown palette. But I like all of these shades and really enjoy them. Uh, these are kind of like my perfect for like neutral brown shades and I love them and I'm definitely keeping this even if the palette has gotten a bit giant. I actually think these quads from Romand are like such cute gifts especially if someone's like getting into makeup or just kind of want to expand their like makeup collection a little bit and like try different colors they're always just such like nice little cohesive palettes that just work so well so I'm keeping this one for sure. And then this one is, I think it's like the strawberry milk one. I like this one as well, but I just don't use it as much as the other one, the other quad. And I also have other pinky toned eyeshadows in larger palettes that I enjoy more. So again, this one is really great. 
I love it. I just don't use it as much as other things. So I'm going to declutter this one. And this one I just got and I'm so impressed with. I talked about it in the JB video. So if you like beauty content, you haven't seen that one yet, then go check it out. But this is such a pretty eyeshadow quad. It's very like kind of like mauve sort of colors and reminds me a lot of the color schemes of luxury brands eyeshadow palettes. I've been really enjoying using that recently. So we're gonna keep these two and declutter this one. And then let's do palettes that are this kind of size, like the medium kind of size. We've got quite a few in this department, but again, I feel like I'm pretty clear on what's happening. Let's talk about the two Romand ones I have. Um, I have two of the Better Than Eyes palettes. And if you are looking for a beginner or even like if you're not a beginner, but just like a K-Beauty eyeshadow palette, I can't recommend these enough. I especially love this one. This is the Peony Nude Garden. And then I also have this one, which is the Dreamy Lilac Garden. Both of these are really pretty, but I really only find myself reaching for this one. And here I am bringing up my color analysis again. But once I kind of figured out, like I'm definitely cool toned and I'm definitely uh, a summer, I kind of was like, oh, like all cool tone products that are like not super dark will work well on me. And that is not really the case, especially when it comes to eye colors, like more smoky sort of colors, if that makes sense, aren't as flattering as like kind of just like a soft pink. You know what I mean? It's not just about warm tone and cool tone and like light and dark, but also about like levels of saturation and levels of color. So this one just has like the right level of like color in it. Like it's just got a little bit more of that like soft color as opposed to like really desaturated. You know what I mean? And this one is like, yeah, a bit more smoky and gray. I just don't find this one works for me as effortlessly as this one does. This is a really beautiful palette as well, but of the two, I've barely used this one and I use this one all the time. So decluttering this one, keeping this one. And then you can kind of see like the same sort of case study with these two K-Beauty palettes here. This one is from Holica Holica and I've been really impressed by this. This is the Ripe Berries Eye Palette. I think I've been really enjoying using it. As you can see, 12 shades and all of them tend to have like a little bit of color to them. They're not like super bright or anything. They're very soft, but they're all like just got a little bit of like a little bit of color to them. And this one from Clio is the Pro Eye Palette. Um, and I think it's called By the Sunset, Pick Me By the Sunset. I think this is a very pretty palette. But again, I found the eye looks with this were quite underwhelming. They made me just look a little bit like dull, a little bit sick. Again, it's very gray and it just doesn't really work for me around the eyes. I know this palette, I think actually is like won an award this year from Glowpick. So it's like a really popular um, series of palettes. So maybe a different shade would suit me better, but I'm really happy with the ones I'm using at the moment. But yeah, kind of a little fun case study. You can see how like similar the tones in these two kind of are, like these ones are the ones I use a bunch. So that's interesting. And then I have these two from Flower Nose. Um, if you've seen my Flower Nose videos, I've tried a couple of different ones, but I tend to only use like the eyeshadow palette that I think I'm actually gonna like and use. So I usually can give like the other one to a friend or I can donate it. This one is like the strawberry shoe one. You can see it's very like pretty neutral tones. This one is quite gray and smoky, but every now and then when I'm going for like a glam vibe, like this is so cute. And I like that they're softer. Like I can really do like a softer kind of glam moment. They have really pretty cool tone palettes. And then this one, which is similar, but a little bit more pinky. I really like this one. It's got just like really nice, like pinky kind of undertones. It's also really pretty. So I'm keeping these two. I really like them and the glitters especially are just like so gorgeous. And then just this one, which is just uh, my long boy. I feel like I've mentioned this in maybe one or even two declutters before. This is the Peri Peri Muteful Rose Eye Palette. You can see he's a very nice long boy. I've gotten a lot of wear out of this, but I am not wearing it as much as I used to, especially with the uh, like cool tone being somewhat like trending in K-beauty. So this one was definitely more of like that neutral kind of like cooler leaning palette that was like at the start of that wave. But now there are so, so, so many cool tone palettes like the one I've shown you that I just prefer to this one. This one is great, but it's just one of those things where it's like realistically with, especially the amount that I'm like lucky enough to get to test and try, um, I just don't reach for this over other ones that I prefer more. So I am gonna declutter this one sadly. It served me well, but I just haven't been reaching for this now that I have other ones that I like a lot more. And then we have like the big palettes. We have a few modern renaissance 
I've had this for so long. This is like my first big girl eyeshadow palette. You can see I've used this color a lot. I just don't know if I really have the heart to declutter it, to be honest. Like, it's still got such pretty colors in it. It's really old, but I just... Every now and then I dip into this shade, Vermeer. It's such a pretty shimmer. Like, it's so gorgeous. Like, this palette is still really, really good. Um, bon Fresco, such a pretty color. Um, if I want like these sort of cranberry pinks, they're pretty. I like the brown shade. I've actually used this for my eyebrows a bunch um, when I was like in uni. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna keep it. You know, I just, I love her. She's special to me. She's very, like, of a very particular time. Oh gosh, am I having like a sentimental makeup moment? Maybe. Just a little bit. It's such an interesting palette, like the more I look at it. Like it really is like a blend of like more cool tone shades and more warm toned shades. If anyone was like big into like beauty YouTube and stuff in like 20, ooh, like 15, 2016, this was like the eyeshadow palette. And I'm buying it and being like, wow, because I don't think at the time we could get Anastasia in Australia. It was like years ago. So I like got it when I was like on a trip and I was like, ha 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 ha, like. I have you in my clutches. And I remember using it so much on the trip. I was so hyped to have it. I'm gonna hold on to this for a little while. I still, you know, it's still a place for you in my drawer. And then we have these two. This one from Colourpop, Stone Cold Fox. I think they're really cool because again, this was sort of when cooler tones were sort of starting to become popular again, especially like, I just wanna clarify, like it's not like cool tones go out of shade. It's like saying like gold or silver is on trend, but that also is like kind of a thing. Warm tone, like eyeshadow palettes were just like such a big thing. Every single eyeshadow palette being released was like warm tone. Not every single one, but you know what I mean? Like that was like a lot of the releases. So when Colourpop came out with like a cool tone palette, everyone was like, oh my gosh. Um, but you know what, can I be honest? I use this and every time I use this, I'm not really that impressed by the formula. It's just okay. It doesn't really blow me away. I don't know, I've used it quite a bit. And maybe it's like silly for me to say this because obviously it's like a tonally cool tone palette, but I feel like a lot of the looks I've been doing with this kind of turn out looking the same. Like a lot of the shades are very similar. I feel like blended out on the eye. So I think I'm gonna declutter it. I'm just not using it. I just don't enjoy using it as much as my other eye palettes. And then this is the last one. This is the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. I was tossing up for ages if I wanted to get the Natasha Denona Glam or Retro Palette. I just, I don't know, they just looked very delectable. I wanted to try the formulas. So I ended up going for this one and I think it was the right move. I love this color mod. It looks really like white in the pan, but on the eye, it's like really pretty soft ballet pink. And I feel like, again, coming into the holiday season, I need to reach for this one. But that's the thing as well. I think sometimes when you have like a few different options that you don't really love, you know, you can't, you can't see the forest through the trees, if that makes sense. I think just for me personally, I like having a more edited sort of collection of things to pick from because it's just less clutter physically and kind of like mentally. This kind of is like a sort of updated version of the Anastasia palette, a lot more cool tone shades, but a few kind of more neutrally warm ones. I'm actually going out this evening. I feel like I should use this. This color especially is really pretty. I do like this one and this one and like that one for like just a glam look and then like a bit of glitter on it. And it's like delish. I really like all the colors in it. and the formula is so gorgeous. So I will continue having and holding and using this one. So forgive the jumble a little bit, but I am gonna declutter these ones here and I'm gonna keep these ones here. Which is still pretty healthy. I could probably cut it down a little bit, but I'll, you know, as we go into the festive season, I'm doing a lot more eye looks than I do day to day. Uh, I might be able to pare it down a little bit more, but I'm happy with that. I think that, that feels good. And this is what we are decluttering from drawer number two. A lot of pieces here in the eye category were things that were kind of um, expired or I'd finished using and just waited to talk about here. There are a couple of other ones, especially in the eyeshadow palette category, where I was like, I kind of, it's been a while coming, you know? I've been meditating on uh, gently decluttering those. I'm feeling good about that. That feels nice and good. That is draw two done. And then we're gonna move on to the final draw, which is draw number three, which is all things lips, which is gonna be a bit of a struggle because it's my favorite category because I love lip products. So fingers crossed it goes okay. And finally, we come to draw number three. Third and final draw. This could either be the hardest draw or the easiest, kind of depending on how you look at it. But I love a good lip color. If I'm gonna highlight like one feature when it comes to a makeup look or have like a focus on one feature, it's usually lip. 
lips. I really enjoy lip colors. I think I inherited that from my mum because she's also like a lipstick lady. So we have here our taller and glosses. Then we have lipsticks and some like smaller lip colors, you know, tall, small. And then I have all of my lip glosses in here, or like most of them, and then lip liners. So we're gonna go through everything. I will say I'm just gonna start with lip liners because I'm actually not getting rid of any of my lip liners. I basically have two lip liners that I love and have been perfect for me and they were the ones that I primarily used, but then I don't think either of those are made or stocked anymore. I think they've been discontinued. So I've been trying a bunch of new ones and that's a somewhat recent development, um, but I will say I am enjoying the Romand lip matte pencils. I have two of the colors and so far out of like the new kind of affordable lip liners I'm trying. I like those ones quite a bit and I also quite like the Revlon formula. The Revlon Colorstay Longwear Lip Liner formula. It has like a really sharp tip. It's very precise and I quite like that. So yeah all of these lip liners are staying and then let me shuffle these around and we'll start talking about all of these because there's a lot to get through. Alrighty, let's start with this container. This is primarily like traditional lipsticks. And then up here we have like some lip balms, like tinted lip balms typically, and then lip matte stains and some like smaller tints. I also just have this one off to the side, which normally sits in here. So I suppose I'll start there because I am gonna keep this one. This is the Lana Lips Cocoa Nutter Lana Stick. This is a really nice thick lip balm. Um, I just put it on my cuticles because don't mind me, I have like a couple of uh, bits where my nails have gotten a little a little ratty, so don't look too close. But yeah, I've been really liking this lip balm. We'll just do like a rapid fire on the lip balm section at the front. Let me just move this back a little bit. Ones I'm keeping are this one, this one, this one, this one, and then the other ones are not really lip balms. They're kind of like tinted gloss sticks, I would say, so we'll jump into those in a sec. But all four of these I wear and use really regularly, actually. The Mecca Cosmetica Tinted Lip Delicious, this is in the rose shade, is so pretty. I've had this for a while, but it's still a really gorgeous lip color. If you are in Australia or you're coming to visit, Mecca Cosmetic brand products are really good. This one I am obsessed with. This is the Bobbi Brown Extra Lip Care, oh, what's it called exactly? Extra Lip Tint in the shade Bare Pink. I am very nearly out of this. I love this. I think this is like a very underrated kind of like dewy baby pink soft lip balm. It has like the slightest tint to it, but it's so natural. It's so pretty. I always take this with me when I'm traveling. I love having it. I am obsessed with this lip balm. I think it's just the best. Then the Espoir, Oh, I don't know the name of it and I think it's in cream, but it's basically like the Espoir lip balm. I haven't tried the Dior lip balm. I would like to. It is definitely on my wish list, but you can kind of see it's like just like a tinted glowy pink lip balm. I like this one a lot as well. It's a little bit more pigmented than the Bobbi Brown one. This one is nice as well. Um, just like a little bit more of like a tinted lip balm as opposed to like that really barely there tint. And then this one is the I'm Meme Bear lip balm, I think it's called. This is also just a tinted lip balm, but as you can see, it's got a little bit more pigment to it. So the pigment order would go like that maybe, or maybe that, these two are about the same, but this one is like the sheerest and this one is probably the most tinted. But yes, I do love a good tinted lip balm. They're all tinted actually, except for this one. But then most of my other lip balms I keep by my bedside table and I use them a lot, but these are like more of the makeup-y kind of stick ones. Yes, yeah, so I'm keeping all of these ones. And then this one here, uh, I'm gonna keep for a little while longer, but I feel like it's kind of on its last legs. This is the Fresh Rose lip balm. And as you can see, it's like gone a little melty and a little bit wonky, but I did test it the other day and it still seems fine. So I'm gonna keep using this one. I like a lot of fresh products. I especially love the Soy Face Cleanser. I have been using the Rose uh, Deep Hydration Moisturizer and I love that. I haven't really talked about that yet, but I think it's amazing. This product from Fresh is just okay. Um, it's like their tinted lip balms. I know they're really popular, but they're just okay to me. They're not my favorite. Uh, they're fine. I don't like them as much as the other ones, but yeah, it's good. You know, it's working. It's fun. I do reach for it from time to time, but it wouldn't be like a top fave, but it is gonna stay. And then these guys are getting uh, decluttered and that is because they are very old uh, and I'm pretty sure they're expired. I know this one for sure has changed color and texture and that 
is usually an indicator and I think I bought this one before I bought this one and this one I just don't really use that much I don't really like there's actually another longer um, like tinted balm I have in another section that's like really weirdly similar to this in terms of formula and I don't really like either of them <laughs> they're like tinted balm, but they're not particularly like glossy or glowy like they have a thicker kind of like almost lipstick texture but at that point I'm like I prefer to use a lipstick than like these I don't know, but this is the DHC Color Lip Cream. I love the DHC Lip Cream, just the original variety, but the colored one doesn't really do a lot for me. It's not anywhere near as moisturizing or nourishing as the original formula. It's almost like a completely different formula, in my opinion. It's not bad, it's just not great, and I don't really reach for either of these anymore, so I'm decluttering both of them. And then these ones here are Tinted Lip Balms. I have this one which is newer, this is the Romand Glasting Melting Balm. I've seen kind of mixed reviews on this, like some people like it and some people really don't. It is one where I think you do have to just like not put it up any more than the tiniest bit, you know what I mean? I wouldn't put this all the way up like a lipstick because it is super soft. But some people have been saying it gets like gritty and like weird and I don't know, but I haven't found that. I will say I feel like it's a lot more pigmented than I kind of thought it was going to be. I have the shade number nine Peonies. I have seen that they've come out with like a more like a lighter more neutral color and i'm kind of like ooh. um but also uh, i do have this one i quite like it it's not like my fave but i like it i've been enjoying using it it is a very pretty color if you like glossy kind of shiny balm products i think you would like this but it is quite um quite pigmented in my opinion and then these two they look a little bit worse for wear this is the i'm meme bare lips question mark question mark I don't know this and this are very similar formulas this is the opera lip tint looking quite worse for wear I've had both of these for quite a while and this is where I'd be like maybe I shouldn't have these anymore but again I've been using them on the reg they don't look different they don't smell different they feel good uh, they look very pretty on the lips these are just very similar sheer glossy formulas this one is like just a little bit more natural kind of rosy vibes and then this one is like a little bit more glossy, I would say, a little bit more glowy. Yeah, I like them both a lot. They're very pretty. I like bringing them with me in my bag as well because I could put on like a lip tint or something that's a little bit more high maintenance before I go out and then top up with one of these because they're just like very no fuss. I don't need a mirror to put them on. But yeah, I love these two. These are like all time fave lip colors for me. Just gonna have a little sippy sip of my beverageino. I've been filming this intermittently actually because I noticed myself starting to lose my voice after each draw. I don't know, I just like, you know, the in-depth chattiness of it. It feels kind of like I'm hanging out with a pal. I always like seeing uh, when people watch these sort of longer kind of chat through videos, especially, oh, sorry. <laughs> Especially with beauty, I have been really getting back into beauty more, especially over on some more short form platforms in other places like Instagram and TikTok. So um, if you want more beauty content, I tend to do it more over there because I can kind of do it bite size and it just performs better, I find. Anyone's like super invested in the, you know, behind the curtain of it all. But if you are into that and you want more stuff like this, that's kind of where I do a little bit more of it, you know? Let's do these ones here because I feel like I know where I'm at here. So we have here a mix of kind of more matte products, I would say, like matte velvety sort of tints. One that's just the glossy sort of tint, but is smaller. <laughs> so I put it in this section. And this one's actually kind of glossy too. Uh, a bit of a hodgepodge, if I'm being real. But I have some thoughts about these because this section is not one that I reach for as much because I do generally slash more recently, I have been preferring glossier kind of balmier products. So the matte products I don't reach for as much, except I do like a matte product when I go out. In particular, I do like these two. What is that? Is that like little water or makeup marks? Mmm, delicious. This is the Moonshot Cream Paint and this is the YSL, I believe it is the Tour Matte Stain. Um, but I would say this is a very like watery type of tint. If I had to pick a favorite, I would pick the YSL. I just think the formula is a little bit more sophisticated and just works for my preferences. I don't like matte lip products because I don't like how it feels on the lips. It can often feel quite thick. I am like a drier type of skin type, uh, more dehydrated. So I don't like how 
high maintenance a lot of matte lip colors are like when they start to get like crumbly or flaky and then reapplying it it doesn't look good and it's like a whole thing so unless it's for like a particular look or something i tend to not do you know the matte lip look on the day to day it's just not my preference but this one is so thin and watery it's almost like a tint that stains your lips and it's just so pretty and it is looking a little worse for wear it's a little old but it has this like tip that is quite precise so you can kind of draw like a really good line around the lip i don't even know if they make this anymore so there's probably not much use in me talking about it a bunch but i just think it's a beautiful lip color and i feel like i don't know i should probably play around with some of the other like YSL lip colors because I have two. I will talk about this one in a minute, but um, I do think they make some really, really beautiful. Sorry, that crow was very noisy. I do think they make some really beautiful lip colors. I'm just very impressed with what I've been able to try so far. I really, really like this one, but I also like this one. This is more of like a traditional kind of whipped moussey kind of formula, but I like it a lot more than others because it does feel a little bit moisturizing. This one's like slightly more, has a little bit more warmth to it. And this one is a bit more like cool toned. So I do love this one the most, but I also like this one. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep both of those. And then the Peri Pera Ink Velvet. I have the Ink Airy Velvet number 13 and the Ink Velvet in 27. If I'm being real, I haven't used either of these a bunch recently. Again, I just don't go for matte products. And you'll see, like, from last year's declutter to this year's, like, I feel like every time I do a makeup declutter, you just see less and less matte products. And that's also just because I feel like they're also not as in fashion at the moment. They're not as trendy as things like, you know, um, like lip glazes and like tinted balms. I feel like that's been really, really popular this year. So there's just not as many of them coming out, not as many able to catch my eye. Let me just swatch these two and kind of see what's happening here. Cause I remember this one being like kind of a nudie color. Yeah. It's a pretty like a rosy sort of MLBB kind of color. I say that as I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is a nice color, but I just, I felt the formula on my hand and I was like, ah, oh, yes, I remember this well probably will not get any more use out of it if I'm being and the airy ink velvet in number 13 that's pretty you can see this is a bit of a different formula it's a little bit lighter we are very much in the festive season at the moment so I'm kind of like oh that's fun because it's like a nice cool toned sort of ready pinky color but it's not like super bright and super intense it is like a little bit of like a more um like a lighter weight kind of airy formula as it does say ink airy velvet that is actually really pretty i probably still won't wear it a bunch just knowing myself but i do like the look of this one this one is nice but i don't think i'll wear it like the original peri peri ink velvet it's a good formula it's very affordable if you are after a like velvety matte kind of tint i would recommend those but just being honest with myself i don't really reach for them and I would like recommend them to people but in terms of like what do I actually use myself I'm not really using those I might hang on to that one though because I do think that's pretty and I do think that would like layer nicely and again I have found actually after some declutters both with like fashion and makeup uh, I'm lucky to get to try a bunch of things but sometimes like I think I may have said earlier in this video it's a little bit hard sometimes to see the forest through the trees or maybe that analogy doesn't work because I'm maybe i mean sometimes it's hard to see the tree when i'm looking at the forest that is not the analogy but basically because i sometimes get to try a bunch of things and there's kind of a lot i sometimes will not notice something or i'll overlook something or i won't you know think to use something because there's too much that i'm kind of looking at and i wonder if this product might be one of the ones that i might use there's a very good chance that i could hang on to this and i still wouldn't really use it let me just take these off my hand before they completely stain them because I do want to swatch a couple more for you. Oh, okay, that's very much stained my hand. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Good testament to their lasting power. But yeah, I would recommend the Peri Pera Ink Velvet line if you are looking for some matte lip products. And again, the price point is very nice on these, but I'm, I'm gonna declutter this one and I'm going to hold on to this one. We'll see if I use it, but I don't know. I do like the color though. A couple others I think I am going to declutter. This one, I've held onto this one for so long and I just, I always don't want to declutter it because I'm like, it's so pretty, but I never use it. And I've sort of come to that conclusion this year. And I think I realized why I don't use it. And say it with me, folks, 
color analysis. <laughs> well, not totally. This is the U Satin Lip Pencil from NARS. I don't even know if they make this in like a full size, um, but I was like, wow, this color is so pretty. I don't want to declutter it because it's like so unique and it's like such a nice color. But every time I would like put it on, um, I don't know, there's something about it where I was like, this is like, looks really hardcore. And it's because it's almost like kind of a neon. I do think this is a great product. I don't use it. Uh, I didn't use it last year, but I thought I would keep it and I didn't use it again really this year either. So I am going to declutter this. And then this one, I think this is really pretty color. This is from Surratt. This is their um, automatic lip crayon in men. Let me just like put this on my hand so I don't feel like I'm completely, oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, that's really pretty. Oh no. Oh no, it's gorgeous. Okay, I thought I wasn't going to keep this because I thought from looking at it, I was like, maybe the reason why I don't wear this that often is because it's like orange, but no. It's like a beautiful blue based. Oh my God, it's so pretty. I don't wear red lipstick that often, but every now and then I do like to wear a red lipstick and that is a really gorgeous one. Um, oh my God, that is so pretty. Are you kidding me? Wow. Okay, I thought I was going to declutter that one, but I don't think I am because that is so gorgeous. Never mind. I'm a numpty. I'm going to declutter this though. So this is the Laka. I don't know the exact name of this tint. It's like a, like a glossy, balmy kind of tint. And I feel like I saw something recently where I think this maybe was like a top rated or like very popular lip tint this year, but honestly, I'm not a big fan. It's sort of a mix between the color, which I tried it a few times and I was like, this color doesn't really do anything for me. It's kind of like a, a baby pink, but it's like a little bit yellowy, a little bit warm. So there's that. But the formula I didn't think was particularly standout. Maybe other people disagree, but I'm not particularly jazzed about this. I just tried it a few times and I was like, this isn't really doing a lot for me. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's fine, you know, it's all right. Maybe there are other people who really, really like this. It could be the color that's mainly throwing me off, but either way, I'm not really getting any use out of this. So it doesn't make sense to hold on to it. And then last but not least, I just wanted to touch on this one quickly because I am going to hold on to it because I like the formula, but the packaging is not great. This is from Espoir. I'm not hundred percent sure on the exact name of it, but let me basically like the, basically here, it kind of like leaks out of the top and like onto here and it just gets like all messy and I don't like that it does that. So it's not one that I really like to take out with me because I'm like worried it's gonna like leak in my bag and because it's like a stain kind of pigmented glossy product I was like that could be a nightmare. But the actual color and the product is very nice but I'm not super amazed by the packaging so just wanted to mention that because <laughs> like the product's good but the packaging I don't know if mine's faulty. I had seen online though that some people were talking about other Espoir lip products that were leaking or having like packaging problems. So I don't know what's up with that, but uh, yeah. The color and the finish is gorgeous though. It's like a really pretty like glossy pink pout. You'll come to see as we go through, if you've seen any of my makeup declutters before, you probably know what time it is, but I do just like a cool toned pinky lip color with a bit of gloss. It's kind of a lot of what we're about to see. Yeah, a bit annoying that I don't really like taking it out with me because I'm like forever afraid of the packaging faultiness. Okay, now let's talk about lipsticks. I'm keeping this row. I was gonna say these are my only like typical lipsticks, but then I'm like, no, actually all of these are. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this row. I think I talked through all of these in depth in last year's Makeup Declutter, but I will just briefly go through it again. These two from Bobbi Brown. I love these lipsticks. This is their, uh, oh gosh, Crushed Lip Color in the shade Baby. And I believe this one is called, yeah, Cali Rose. These are just very pretty. This one's like a baby pink. This one is a pink with like just a slightly deeper kind of tone to it. This is like a classic lipstick. They're very great. They're very reliable. The wear is nice. They look really pretty on the lip. I liked them at the end of last year. I still really like them. They're a very like standard classic lip color. And I think they're great. Another one is the Rodan lipstick. I don't think they make these anymore, but this is in the shade Loving Lucy. It's a very pretty like glossy berry kind of color. I think the packaging is super cute, but I got it from my old workplace. And also it's, it has my name on it, Lucy. So kind of a vibe. And I actually do wear this whenever I want something like a little bit more dramatic and a little bit more vampy because it's a glossy formula. I can like sheer it out to be like a sheer wash of like kind of a bloody <laughs> color. I don't know. It's fun. And then these two, um, I love this matte lipstick formula. I know I said before, I don't really like matte products, but I literally just wore this the other day. 
These are the Ramand uh, Zero Matte Lipsticks or Matte Zero Lipsticks. This one is in number 10. I don't know exactly what shade it is. And this one is in number 15. This one is obviously a bit more vampy. Oh, it's not obvious, but you can tell from the lettering. The lettering uh, there is like meant to match the color inside. This one I wore recently. It's like a more pinky mauvey color. Um, and this one is like a darker, more vampy sort of red. Don't wear this one as much because again, it's not like my daily go-to, but it is a nice uh, matte lip color. And these as well, the formula is quite um, cushiony uh, and also like has a bit of that moisturizing kind of vibe. Very nice. They don't go kind of like crispy, crunchy, flaky. They just kind of fade away, but they do have like a nice matte look. They're just very flexible formulas. So I really like those. And again, I love Romand. I'm such a Romand stan. <laughs> the price point on Romand products is also really good. I love the packaging. The formulas are, you know, nine out of 10 times, like 90% of the products I've tried from them, I really love. So yeah, I'm always going to recommend Romand products. They just make such good stuff. Then I have this one from REM Beauty. I was tossing up whether to declutter this or not, because I think it's like cute, but honestly, I don't really reach for it. The color is like, okay. It's kind of like this nineties, like beigey, pinky nude, but like, I don't know. I don't think it's a particularly special formula. I don't think it's a particularly special color. I have another lipstick that is like a similar color to this, but in a formula I like more and in a finish I like better. This is fine. You know, it's, it's okay. I'm interested to try some other things from REM Beauty. I've heard like better things about the newer products, like the sweetener foundation. I know people really like. To me, REM is like, I've tried a few things from them and I think it's fine. I'm not really blown away. If I'm gonna go for a, like a nudie, beigey kind of color like this, I have ones I like more. So I will declutter this. I'll briefly talk about these two because these are like newer additions. I have this one from Espresso, which I believe is an Italian brand. I actually got sent this to try as like a PR sample. Um, and I was really impressed by this. Number one, it smells like coffee, but I looked at this and I was like, oh my God, like this color is so dark. You can see it's like really, really dark in the tube. But when you swatch it out, it's like a really light, balmy kind of color. On my hand, it looks almost like purple, but on my lips, it comes off as like a really pretty wine color, which I really like. And again, it's very like fuss free because it's so balmy. I feel like that could almost be in the tinted balm category, but it is a lipstick because it's like pigmented enough and dark enough that I wouldn't <laughs> kind of pop it in the bag as like a casual my lips sort of color because my lips definitely are not that color. This is the Aroma Light lipstick in the shade for Wine Me. Um, and yeah, it's very pretty. Look how glossy that is. Very cool. So that one's like newer. And then this one I talked about again in the J Beauty video. I did talk about this one in full in the J Beauty video, so I won't go into it, but this is the Kate uh, Lip Monster lipstick. Very nice kind of pink, neutrally pink. I realized for a lot of people, this would like not be like a neutrally pink color, but to me, this is like an everyday pink lipstick. New edition, very much enjoying it. It's gonna stay. And then these three, I've held onto these for ages because I really like all of them. The MAC lipsticks, I have one in the shade Blankety, which is like a really quite like gray nude almost. It's actually very similar in color to the REM Beauty one. This one is just maybe a hint more gray. This one maybe has like just a hint more kind of pinkiness to it. But this one is like their amplified formula. So it's like a pigmented kind of satiny traditional lipstick. And if you are cool toned and you're looking at nudes, then this one might be one to consider. And then I have uh, one of my favorite lipsticks, which is the Cream Sheen and Peach Blossom. I don't know if they still sell it, but um, again, I'll just show you because I guess I'm showing you all of these. That one is like a really nice peachy color. You can kind of see, cause I like double swiped it here and not so much there. It's a little bit more of a sheer sort of glossy formula. This is like another go-to lipstick for me, very easy just put it on, don't need to like fuss with too much liner or anything like that. It's like easy breezy. I think this is like a beautiful, my lips for better color for me. And if you are on the fair side and looking for something that's not like super peachy, it's a little bit more on like the neutral cool side, I would recommend that for you as well. And then this one, which is like so old, it's like really, really old. This is from Candy Doll. It's one of their lipsticks. It's like the milk tea color. This one is a little bit more of like a blue toned pinky nude. You can kind of see compared to the others. I still really like that lip color. So <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to it. It smells fine. It looks fine. Um, but yeah, that's a bunch of different nudie kind of colors. And then we'll do one more for funsies. This is the Charlotte Tilbury uh, lipstick in KKW, which is like a really pale nude. Oh my gosh, look at it. 
it's so pale compared to the other ones. You know, I was thinking I want to keep this one, but as I'm looking at it, and again, as I have now learned about color stuff, I'm like, oh, I think there's a reason why I don't reach for that. And it's kind of hard to see. And again, in life, in person as opposed to like on camera. It's not crazy different to something like MAC Blankety, but Blankety has a little bit more depth to it and it's a little bit more pinky, whereas this one is like a straight up peach. I do really like the formula though, um, and I wanna try more stuff from Charlotte Tilbury because the things I have tried from Charlotte Tilbury, I really enjoyed. I feel like I'm seeing so many of their products going viral and it's definitely giving me like a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury FOMO, like I need to try some of that new stuff out. But I also remember I was solo traveling when I like bought this lipstick, uh, it was before Charlotte Tilbury was available like outside of the UK or like more widely. And I remember when I was like in London and I was like, oh my gosh, wait, they have like that new makeup brand here. I want to go see if I can get it. I was just like nervous and like alone. <laughs> and I went into like this department store that was like very fancy and I was like nervy there. And the sales assistant was like very nice to me and gave me a bunch of like uh, face mask samples, which I thought was very sweet of her. So it's a bit of like a sentimental vibe around that but if I'm being honest like I just don't reach that color and I just don't think it really actually suits me that well. It reminds me a lot of another lipstick that I also really loved at one point but I also had like red hair so when I was like a redhead these kind of colors felt more complimentary because like my hair was really warm toned and like it all kind of tied in but I think especially now that I have been basically like my natural color of hair this year which is like just a you know a brown, like a cool tone of darker brown. I, I just feel like I can tell more clearly when colors don't suit me as opposed to when I had colored hair, because when I had colored hair, I would be like, oh, it's because my hair is colored and that's why it doesn't suit me because it's like not matching with the color of my hair, which would be true sometimes, especially when I had like pink hair. If the color of my hair was like more warm toned or cool toned, depending on how it was fading out, then some colors would not suit me super well. And then I had platinum, like white hair for a while. And I was like, well, I have white hair. Like maybe it's just not matching because my hair is like really light and it, you know, whatever. But now that it's like my natural hair color, <laughs> it's not so much that it doesn't match my hair because my hair is not a color. It's well, I mean, brown's a color, but you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't have like a fashion hair color. So if something doesn't work for me now, I'm like, well, it must be me. <laughs> or like my features, like as a whole, it's not just like one thing I can kind of point to. So anyway, tangent. I don't know if anyone else has found this. If you're like me, if you have had fashion colors and you've gone back to a natural color or your original hair color, if you've noticed that like a bunch of things that like you weren't sure about, now you're like more sure about and you know it doesn't work. I feel like I'm really ragging on this poor lipstick, uh, but I like the formula a lot. I don't actually have any beef with the lipstick. I just don't wear it and I kind of feel bad having it sit there and reminding me, being like, please use me. That shrimp uh, like from Shark Tale, you know, where he's like, I have three kids. So uh, I didn't think I was going to declutter this, but I actually think I will because I don't reach for it. Um, and now comparing them with other things, I'm like, yeah, well, one of these is not like the others, only mildly to some of you watching. Actually on camera, I don't know. Maybe you can kind of see it more on camera. In person, they're not super different, but I feel like on camera you can tell this one's like more orangey, maybe? Don't know. Let me know if you can. But yes, I think I'm going to declutter this one, but with love, like in a Marie Kondo, like thank you for the memories. The memory of buying this was special, um, but not using it. So womp womp. If you hear any uh, tappy taps or noises in the background that may or may not be my boyfriend in the room with me, uh, you'll see I have three of the same <laughs> lipstick uh, together and these are all from Jill Stewart. Um, and I love these lipstick formulas. It's cute, it has like the little mirror in the lid. I feel like they did used to have a US website, but I think they've closed it. So now it's back to being Japan exclusive. So unless you visit Japan or you use a shipping forwarder, I think it's pretty hard to get. I have seen it in other countries. Like I found one of these in Thailand, but I couldn't give you detailed information on stockists because I am not an employee of the company, despite how I am talking about these lipsticks, but they're just so beautiful. Um, this is the first one I got in this like really pretty pinky corally shade. They just sheer out really beautifully. They're like sheer and glossy when you put them on. And then I also have it in this shade, which is like, again, basically my typical day-to-day -day soft pink color, just like that, all balmy and pretty. And then one more is I have this one, which is more of like a violety kind of color, which I like for, you know, more cooler weather, like wintery vibes. Um, it's just like that, uh, like a sort of like a soft pinky berry. Um, I wear all of these quite regularly. 
I love them. It's one of those ones where I like bought this one first and then I was using that a bunch. And then the next time I had the opportunity to buy one, I bought that one <laughs> and I was using that one a bunch. And I was like, okay, I think I bought all of these over the course of like several years. And I feel like this could potentially be one of my favorite lipsticks or lipstick formulas because I think the packaging is adorable. It's like princessy. It's a little bit extra, but not like gaudy. Okay, it's a little bit gaudy. I mean, it's got like a gem on it and like a flower lid that like opens up to be a mirror. But like, I don't know, it's kind of princessy. It's a vibe and the formula inside is really good. I just love this lipstick. So I'm keeping all of these because I do wear and use all of them very regularly. And then I'm keeping these two as well. I've spoken about this one before, but this is my like crusty, dusty Chanel lipstick, sort of like sentimental. Um, but they don't make this formula anymore. They've like renewed it. This is the original Rouge Coco Shine. I don't know what the new one's called. I forgot, but they have a new one. And this is in the shade Boy and it's like, Sorry, just laughing because it kind of looks like not good in the tube, but it's like a nude shimmer and it doesn't look that brownie beigey on the lips. It's basically like a tinted lip balm kind of vibe again, but I like layering this one as well. Um, it looks really pretty on the lips. It doesn't look like much there, but uh, you know, still smells fine, looks fine, or maybe it doesn't look fine, I suppose, but to me it looks fine. So that one, and then this one from YSL, it's the Rouge for Lup Shine. I feel like that's their kind of famous glowy sort of one. And it's like this milky baby pink, which is really pretty. This one, because it's a little bit more pigmented, I do have to kind of like sheer it out or pair it with a lip liner because sometimes it can look like just slightly neon-y on me, but it is really pretty. Uh, and again, I love layering this one. I, I do like the formula of this and the scent of this. It's like a jammy kind of like floral apricot kind of vibe. It's yummy. Um, So yeah, all of these sheer guys, <laughs> I feel like. And this is kind of like my like, sort of like treasured lipstick row. And I feel like you can kind of tell they're all basically the same lipstick in different fonts. Um, very similar formula, just like that shiny glossy vibe. So if you know any lipsticks that are like that, that I probably haven't tried yet, then let me know. I really want to try the Hourglass Phantom Glossy Balms. I'm going to put my other ones that I'm keeping back in, but that is my little lipstick section. Alrighty, let's dive into this chunky boy. I was initially like this one, it's gonna take ages, but I don't think it's gonna take as long as you might think it will, or perhaps as I might think it will. <laughs> okay, I have some more lip balms up the front um, and let's just go through them quickly. That one is there because it's in the wrong spot. It's not really a lip balm. It, it's a lip balm, but it's not how I would categorize these lip balms. But these are all like tube lip balms, as you can see with your beautiful eyes. Actually, they're all three different formulas. The Light Lamps Glossy Balm, this was in the shade Candy. I got this one this year. They sent it to me in PR, which is very sweet of them because I'm a big Lana Lip stan. I think they make really great lip products. I have loved them for ages. I don't know when it was that I tried the pear one. Was it in high school? Maybe. The pear Lana Lips lip balm was like my first love. And then it's kind of only grown from there. A beautiful, loving relationship. Uh, but this is the Glossy Balm. So it's a bit more like a lip gloss as opposed to like a lip balm. It has like a lighter, glossier texture as you might imagine from the name. But this is just very pretty. It has like a little bit of a shine to it. Um, a little bit of like shimmer as well, but it's like really subtle, really glassy, glossy on the lips. Then these two, there's the Fruity Jelly Balm, which is similar to the Glossy Balm, but it's a little bit more sheer, a little bit more like a lip balm. Whereas that one is basically a lip gloss, I guess. The Fruity Jelly Balm in Cherry I like because it has a nice like darker kind of tint, but because it shears out, it's not like that intense on me. Uh, and it's cute. I do like pairing this or bringing this with me when I'm wearing a darker red lip color because sometimes I don't want to like actually touch up with the full lip color. I just want something to put on top, especially if like the lipstick's worn away. It like refreshes the lip color, but I don't have to necessarily like reapply like a full red lip again, but I still get to keep like the pigment underneath the look and kind of have it all blend together. I don't know if that made sense. But yes, I like this one. I'm gonna keep this one. I do like this one as well. This is the tinted lip balm in the shade Rose. I just don't use it as much. The formula for this one is a little bit more like their traditional formula. It's their tinted lip balm with SPF 30. So that's great. I don't like it as much as I love the other ones. This one just has a little bit of like a stiffer kind of texture. Um, I don't know if it's like the SPF or the tint, or it could also be because I've had this one for a really long time. Actually, as I'm looking at it, that looks like it's separated in a very interesting way. That could very well be 
the reason. So I am going to declutter this one. And then this one from Glossier. I got this as a gift, which was so sweet, but I just don't really reach for it. I don't love the formula as much as I think other people love the formula. I don't reach for it. So I am just going to declutter it because I've held onto it thinking I would like maybe get into it and I just haven't gotten into it. Now let's talk about this one because it's like here and I don't think it should be here, but I'll also talk about this one because they're actually very similar. This is from Emco Beauty. This is the Lip Plump 4-in-1 Hydrating Lacquer. Um, I worked on a campaign with them that involved this product and I really like it. It is actually also in a shade called Lucy. It's like a glossy candy pink. It is meant to be a dupe of the Tarte ones, um, which I have tried and I actually emptied the Tarte one. I really liked it, but they are also similar to these from Etude, the Syrup Glossy. Um, I love these types of like click up, like pen, lip gloss stick formulas. I think they're very pretty. I love this one from Etude um, in the shade Rosy Lavender. I've worn this one a bunch and I really liked the Tarte one. I can't remember what shade it was in, but it's gone now. But this one is like a little bit more of like a, like a candy pink compared to this one. But I really, really like these formulas. I want to try more of them because they're like very up my alley. Easy to throw into a purse. I love the finish. Now I have these here because they're very tall, <laughs> but these are the Hourglass um, lipsticks. I, oh my gosh, I feel like my brain is like a little bit dead. I think I'm just, it's coming up to the end of the year and I can't remember anything. My brain is too full. I forgot the name of this formula. Unlocked, is it? No, that was a holiday collection. Stiletto? Uh, and then it. Confessions. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Confessions. Confessions lipsticks. The Hourglass Confession lipsticks. I really like these formulas and I think they're very special. Uh, I have like two. This is like a berry one. I have like a more red kind of one. That's that one. And then I have this one, which is like a pinky nudie kind of color. And I do reach for these. I reach for the pinky nudie one probably the most because it's like the most day to day wearable for my kind of looks. But I like the red and the berry colors as well. They're just a nice glossy formula. You can kind of sheer them out and wear them with a the gloss. You can match them with other lipsticks. You can wear them on their own. I just really like these. I think they're a great formula. And again, I really want to try the glossy versions of these. But yeah, I like these lipsticks a lot. I've talked about all three of these lip crayons previously. These two are the Can Make Stay On Balm Rouges. And then this this one is the uh, Zoeva Screen Queen Lip Crayon. Um, this one's like a nudie color. This one's like a peachy color. This one is like a pinky color. They're all very just like swipe on and go lip balms. They're very casual, no fuss kind of products. I feel like you might be seeing a trend. I like a lot of these products for the day to day. They're just easy and they're like tried and true. Like they've been in my collection for years now. And even when I try new things, sometimes I'm like, well, they're not as good as like some of those formulas that I've had for a few years. So I think that really speaks to how good they are, especially the can make ones. I think I prefer the most, but I like this one because of the color, which is like a beigey kind of nude, which it's like a gloss balm stick and I can like put it on top of other ones. And again, it's nice to touch up with, or um, sometimes I even use it over a lip color if I just want to like lighten it slightly. It's not really like an on its own one like these ones, but it's pretty solid. I just want to talk about a couple of things that I have not particularly enjoyed or felt super jazzed about. Uh, this one is from Clio. It's the Melting Sheer um, Tinted Lipstick Lip Balm. This one is the one, when I was talking earlier about that DHC Tinted Lip Cream, and I was like, it's weird because there's like a newer lipstick that I've tried that is basically the same as this. This this is that one. It's like the same kind of thing. I don't know. I was trying like a bunch of K-Beauty products and this was one of them. And I've just used it a few times and I've been like, uh, like every time I've used it, it's not bad. It's just not good. It's a very like lackluster kind of basic formula to me. And it just feels weird because there's so many other products that are just a lot more sophisticated than this. I don't know. It feels like a very old school kind of formula, if that makes sense. Like this is like something that would have come out like 10 years ago. Maybe that's been like a bit harsh, but just compared to other things, I'm like, this is so Averagino to me. So I'm decluttering this. I never reach for it over something else. And this one from Unleashia, this is the non-sticky dazzle tint. Um, it's like a glossy lip kind of formula. I think it might be the color mainly that I don't like about this, but I, again, I'm also not particularly impressed by the formula. I've been a little bit hit and miss with Unleashia. They were very kind to send me like a selection of different products from kind of their original lineup. Uh, so they may not do that again. <laughs> Some of them I really liked and I was like really impressed by like those glitter eye sticks I thought were really cool. But the lip tint 
dazzle tint. I, I, know, I know a lot of people like it, but I don't, again, nothing like ugly bad about it, but the formula is just not very special to me. It's not really a super good tint. It's not really a super good gloss, you know, it's kind of average to me. So I'm going to declutter that one. These are some newer kind of glossy tints, um, Flower Nose and Lily by Red. I like all of these. In particular, I'm quite impressed by the Flower Nose one. Um, I did talk about in one of my videos previously where I tried the Mermaid collection. So if you want to hear more about that, go there. But I think this one is quite nice. I think it's got nice lasting power. Obviously the packaging's nice, smells like green apple. It's a fun time. The 3 CE is good, but I don't really have an extensive review, but if it was bad, it could potentially have already been gone from this section. So there you go. But the Lily by Red, I'm actually super impressed by. And actually, as I was like kind of pulling things out for this video, I was like, oh, the Lily by Red. I remember when I got this, I was using it a bunch. I was like so obsessed with it. And then, you know, went into the drawer uh, and kind of got a little bit hidden behind something else. But I just was looking at it again. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I want to take this on a trip I'm going on because the way this lasts on the lips and like wears is so pretty and it stays glossy. It's so pretty. Let me like swatch it for you. It's like a really pretty, like even tint, but like with a really glossy kind of finish, but not like sticky glossy. It's like watery. Um, and then I'll just remove it in case it stains my hand. But that's just from having it on for a second. You see how it's like tinted in my hand. If you keep this on for like longer, it just wears away really beautifully. Um, and that's something I value because I like having pretty lip colors and trying on things, but I am not huge on doing touch-ups throughout the day. Um, I'll do them obviously, but any really high maintenance products, I'm not a super big fan of. I like things where you can kind of like just set it and forget it. So. I really like this and I also really like it for filming as well because it looks nice like through filming and I don't have to touch it up so I don't know if I hope they still make these but this is the glassy layer fixing tint I specifically have the shade rosy nude and I love it I really really like this this has been like a, a sleeper hit if you will for me this year and then as you can see uh this section here is basically all <laughs> remand lip products I would say I don't know how that's happened, but I do know how it happened and it's because I like them a lot. I picked up most of these, but I did also get sent some by the Remand team, um, but the vast majority were me. <laughs> so we're gonna come back to that because I just wanna point out this one, because one of these is not like the others, one of these is not the same. This is the Fenty Beauty, uh, what's it called? The Stunner Lip Paint in the shade Uncensored. Listen, I held on to this for a while. Keep expecting myself to fall in love. And you know what? It's good to give yourself time to see if you can learn to love um, as opposed to like love at first sight when the honeymoon period is over, like will the love remain? And to be honest, I never reach for it because it's so high maintenance. It's a really beautiful color. And like on the lips, it's like so gorgeous, but it like gets on your teeth so easily. Like it stays really wet. I feel like it doesn't really set down. It's pretty. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like it's one that is like nicer for pictures and for like short periods of time. There are other products which look really beautiful on and are also similarly stunning, but aren't as difficult or as high maintenance. So I am going to declutter this because I just get annoyed every time I wear it and I found myself reaching for it less and less and less. Let's go back to the Remand section. There's actually one more kind of hiding here. Um, this is the Remand Zero Velvet Tint and this is in that more matte formula for a Remand. Again, we've talked about mattes. I don't really reach for them that often, but this one is a pretty one and I would like to keep it. So I'm just gonna slot it in there because then all the Remand ones can be together and it can look aesthetically pleasing. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I do actually wear and use all of these. It's probably one of my favorite lip formulas, but more so than the formula, which I really like. Uh, the primary reason I really like these is because the colors are so good. Like they make such nice, unique colors. And if you're not familiar with Remand, I feel like I've mentioned this in a few videos, so apologies if I'm repeating myself, but the CEO of Remand, the founder, is a like professional color analysis person, analysis, analysis. I'm very excited for Christmas <laughs> to just sleep. A big part of Remand, especially when you're browsing their products online and you kind of like go into more pictures and stuff is that they will say which of their lip colors or like what seasons best suit which colors. And obviously you can completely ignore it, but I have found that the majority of these colors, a couple of these are not technically for my season, if I remember correctly, but the vast majority of them are. And I just find it's, it's really nice because it kind of like takes the guesswork out, I guess, because all of the colors that are designed for, you know, 
my season work really well for me. Like if you don't care about like personal color and stuff, then like by all means, literally just ignore it. But it's more like annoying when companies are like, oh, this is like this type of, you know, it's a cool tone color. And then you see it in person and you're like, well, it's kind of not. Like if they say it's gonna suit your color season, I've never had that not be true, you know? Long roundabout way of saying things, but hey, that's me. <laughs> um, but all of these ones here are the uh, Juicy Lasting Tin Formula. That's their most popular formula, I would say, and the one they have like the most shades of. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe on YesStyle, these typically retail for like less than 10 US dollars. So excellent price point. I think my first one was Fig Fig, um, which is like a bestseller for them for cool tone. And that was like when I think cool tone lip colors or like cool tone makeup generally started trending because I did say this earlier in the video in another section, but like there was a period of time where everything was like warm toned orange and that was what was like really trendy. So it's been nice as someone who is cool toned to have like lots of new cool tone kind of colors to play with. Actually, I probably don't really wear this one. This would maybe be the exception out of the bunch. Um, I think I did get sent this one um, because I think I got the collection. This was like the milk grocery collection. This is in the shade Papaya Jam. It's kind of like orangey. I don't wear this one. So I lied. I don't wear all of them. I think I wear all of them except for Papaya Jam. <laughs> so I will declutter and pass on Papaya Jam because I do not wear that. Um, but pretty much all of the other ones, obviously like there are some that I wear most if you are interested. I would say I wear this one the most or have worn this one the most and you can tell by like the print wearing off. This is Bear Grape. Um, this one also kind of went viral for matching this with the Romanda lip gloss for being the like Won Young K-pop idol combo. This is a really pretty like nudie pink color with like a little bit of like purple in it. It's like a little bit gray, it's sort of muted. It's really, really pretty. This one is sort of newer as is this one. This one and this one, Bare Fig and Bare Vine are nice because they're like a little bit like milky. You can kind of maybe see what I mean, maybe not, but it's just got like a little bit of milkiness to it. And Bare Fig is like a milky sort of version of Fig Fig. But yeah, I can think of occasions recently where I've worn all of these pretty much. Um, I really, really, really like the Ramond Juicy Tints. And then we talked about this one already, which is the matte one. And then these two here are the newer-ish formula, the Dewy Full Water Tint. And I wore one of these yesterday, actually. And I have the shade Custard, Mauve, and Mermaid Pink. And I really like both of them. I really like this new formula. I just don't have as much experience like testing it as I do the original <laughs> formula, as you could probably imagine. But as you can kind of see in the name, it's like, almost like a gloss, I would say, with a bit of a tint to it, as opposed to these, which are like what I would describe as a pretty typical, pretty perfect, uh, like glossy, watery lip tint. It literally says water tint. I'm like, would you be surprised? It literally says water in the name. I have heard there is like a new Ramond gloss formula and I really want to try it. Um, I, yeah, I love this product. I think it's great. I'm a stan. And then last in this line here, we have some little matte guys kind of hanging out. We're gonna go like this. These two here, the I Meme Mystery Lip Tint and the Etude Fixing Tint. Both of these formulas are pretty good. I just don't reach for these. They're a matte formula, not particularly amazing to me. I know people like this one because they're like, it's mask proof. I think that was like how this one went viral for being like a transfer proof lip tint. And it's nice, but this and this one, they're both so similar to my natural lip color, but not you know how there's like my lips for better? I would say these are kind of like my lips, but slightly worse <laughs> because I personally like for lips for better to be like a little bit rosier and a little bit glossier. And these kind of like are a little bit more muted and a little bit more matte. So they're not bad. Actually, you know what? They're, they're actually pretty good formulas, but again, it's not a formula that I particularly care for. So I will declutter both of these. No hate. These would be amazing for you if you like that type of thing. I just don't. I just don't. <laughs> I will hold on to these though, because they're a little bit more unique. Uh, these are old school. I've talked about these before. These are Lime Crime. I bought, I feel like I bought some of these when I was in high school or maybe like early uni. I think the Lime Crime Velveteens are a really nice liquid matte formula. They are very like stereotypical in that formula, but I do think they kind of pioneered that formula. Again, I don't really go for matte colors a lot, but if I wanted a matte liquid lip, which you can also use these as like eyeliners and stuff as well. If I wanted that formula, I would use these. So I just want to have a couple that I like. This one's in the shade Marshmallow, which is like a gray nude color. This one is in the shade Red Roses, which is like a true um, like blue toned velvety red lip. And then this one, 
I've been neglecting because I actually like this formula. This is a matte formula, but it's like a sheer tint matte stain kind of formula. And this is their plushies in the shade Turkish Delight. But this is really pretty and I have enjoyed wearing it. So I feel like I need to put this back into the rotation. Nearly done, last section. Alrighty, lip glosses. Last bit and we're nearly done with like the whole declutter. So let's jump in. I think I'm just gonna have to pull them out. <laughs> Should we just go down the line or maybe I'll pick you know what? We don't need to set any particular method. Let's just jump into it. Starting from the front, actually, these three I will be keeping all of. This one from Maybelline, the Lifter Gloss. I feel like people talk about this being a dupe for the Fenty Gloss Bomb, which I also have and enjoy, and we'll talk about in a moment. But um, I really like this. I have it in the shade. I think this one's Ice. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Ice. <laughs> 002. Um, I think it's beautiful. It's a nice nude lip gloss with just the tiniest hint of like sheen and shimmer very comfy on the lips i yeah i don't really have anything bad to say i love it the applicator is nice and thick and juicy as well like the fenty one so yeah this is a great drugstore lip gloss love it and then this one from flower nose this is their unicorn lip gloss this one is kind of like a milky like nudie sort of shade it's very sheer um and shiny it's very low maintenance it's not sticky or anything it's a very nice formula Nice to top off a more nudie lip color or to kind of tone down or soften a brighter lip color. This one I've talked about a lot um, and I did briefly mention before as being part of a sort of viral lip combo, but this is the Romand Glasting Water Gloss. I love this lip gloss. Like the finish on it is like so shiny and like fairy princessy, you wouldn't believe. However, as someone who loves this lip gloss, I do have to say it does not wear that long. It has basically no wear time. If you like lick your lips or you take like a sip of something, it's basically all gone. A very nice like hydrating like sort of formula, but does just like disappear in a blink of an eye. This one, I feel like I'm on like the Unleash Year hate train today. Um, but this is like their old version of the non-sticky dazzle tint actually, uh, which I think they then reformulated and put in the tube you saw before. Let me just grab it, um, which I am decluttering. It's this one. They've like, I think this is the old one and this is the new one. As I said about the formula, I don't know if they reformulated it, but I'm not overly impressed by this one either. So I'm going to declutter it. This one I've had for a while. This is the Fenty Gloss Bomb in Fussy. I love this lip gloss. It just is so glossy. This color in particular is like beautiful. It's like such a good color for me. I will say after ages of this not leaking, because I've heard it leaked for some people, it has started leaking occasionally and like getting a little sticky on the outside, which is so sad. Didn't think it would happen to me, but it has. But I do still really like this lip gloss. The leaking thing isn't great though, but I have had this for like a couple of years now. So it didn't leak for the longest time. So I don't know what, you know, made it finally start leaking, but this is a beautiful formula. I remember when I initially like heard about these glosses and I started trying them, I was like, it can't be that good. It's lip gloss, like what's the hype? But then I used it and I was like, I'm sorry, everyone, I understand. <laughs> it's very plush, cushiony, has a nice shine. This shade in particular, Fussy, is like so gorgeous. Uh, yeah, great lip gloss. This one I think is technically a lip oil. It's from Laka. And this is the second of two products we are now two of two Laka products where I'm like, I don't know if I get this. Um, this is like a glossy lip oil and I'm just not that impressed by it. Like, it's fine. I'm going to put a little bit on now because my lips are getting a little bit dry after talking for like two hours plus. It doesn't look better than other lip glosses and oils I've tried. It doesn't feel better. It doesn't look better. It doesn't perform better. The price point is fine. And like, you know, it's not always like things are amazing or things are like terrible. Sometimes things are just like fine and just kind of like meh. And this is just one of those things. Um, and I don't really feel the need to hold on to it because I am lucky enough to get to test and try a bunch of other things that I am currently more excited by. Um, so I'm gonna declutter this. Ooh, this one I have been actually wearing a lot recently. This is the Patrick Tar Gloss in the shade, is she younger than me? It's a really pretty corally, pinky, but pretty sheer gloss with like this really gorgeous like pink shimmer. I have been loving layering this over the YSL like tint. So like putting this down as like a matte tint base and then layering this over the top. It has a little bit of like a minty tingle to it, but like nothing too crazy. It's very nice. And I like the component. I just even like how it looks in the tube. Like it's very aesthetically pleasing. It has a very nice like sophisticated shiny glow. It's not too wet or goopy. It's a very nice formula. So yeah, I really like this. I want to try more from Patrick Tarr because I have seen 
a lot of products that I'm like, ooh, ah. But you know, it's hard to um, find where to swatch them in person in Australia. Like a lot of the Sephora's don't have them in store, I found. So I'd like to be able to like swatch and see things in person a little bit more. This one I've talked about over on TikTok. This is the Vise lip gloss, the one that um, is quite popular in Japan. It was like almost sold out everywhere I went when I traveled there. It was like, I had to go to a few different stores to find one, but it's sort of meant to be like the Dior lip gloss. And this is an example where I'm like, this isn't like a revolutionary lip gloss formula, but it's like done well. And I like it more than others. I feel like I'm throwing a lot of shade to that Laka lip gloss oil thing, but it has a nice shine, has like a nice minty tingle, but nothing too hectic. Um, it's just an all rounder. And this one again is like a bit more of a budget buy. Um, if I remember correctly, it was like less than 20 bucks uh, Australian, somewhere around that ballpoint. But yes, I have been liking this one. Let me bring the line up forward. This one from is the Spicy Mood Gloss. That's a fun name. This color is like just slightly out of my comfort zone slash vibe, but because it's a gloss and it's really sheer, it kind of doesn't really matter as much um, and is nice to layer over nude glosses. This one is spicy. Not crazy spicy, but definitely has a real mintiness to it. It's quite tacky. It, is not like other glosses where it kind of like wears away really easy. Like it clings onto your lips. Um, and they did a campaign with, I think, Jenny from Blackpink, I believe. I'll like see if I can show you what I mean, but it's like very luxurious kind of formula um, and applicator and everything. But yeah, it's like quite thick um, and sticky, which if you don't like that, maybe you should avoid it. I don't mind a sticky gloss because it's very hard to have a gloss that's going to stay around and stay glossy that isn't like a little bit sticky. So I'm tolerant to the stickiness because I value long-term glossiness more, but I understand if you don't. But yeah, nice, uh, nice formula. I do like this one. Um, this one is just expired. <laughs> this is the By Terry Balmed Rose. They have in like a pot and like in like a twist up, I think, um, but this is like the lip gloss version, uh, but it's expired for sure. But this one didn't keep my lips as moisturized as I thought it would. Um, but I think maybe the pot would be better, but yes, it's expired. So I'm decluttering it regardless. This one from R.E.M. Beauty. Again, I am sorry to R.E.M. Beauty because it's not a good video for them. Uh, but this is the plumping lip gloss in VCR. I don't really like this that much. It's fine. This is an example where the hair lip gloss that I just showed you is really similar to this in that they're both like plumping. They're both this sort of nudie kind of color. They're both kind of sticky, but the hair one is nicer uh, than this one. This one's fine. I just don't reach for it. Maybe if I had it in the clear or a different color, but as I'm saying that, I'm kind of like, eh, still, it doesn't really rustle my jimmies. So I'm gonna declutter this one. I feel like I have very clear <laughs> feelings about lip gloss. Like if I'm not into it, I'm not into it. But both of these, the Super Shades Mini Lip Gloss and the M Cosmetics um, Travel Size Lip Gloss. I actually really like this M Cosmetics Lip Gloss, but um, both of these are not great. As much as I like these formula, the Super Shades and the M Cosmetics, I'm not reaching for them because they're getting a little crusty dusty, you know? So thank you for your service soldiers, uh, but you are being decluttered. Oh, this one's actually new to me and has been a bit of a surprise. This is from Revlon. This is their super lustrous The Gloss TM. I got sent this in PR and I was like, oh yeah, Revlon, you know, kind of like a bit of a flashback for me. I remember like looking at Revlon in the drugstore for like foundation when I was in high school. But this lip gloss is like really nice. It's very glass, it's very thick. It's like a classic clear lip gloss, but it's like real, real nice. The applicator is like nice and plump and juicy and thick. The formula is so hard to see because it's like clear, but like it's really, oh, there you go. It's super glassy and glossy. It's very lightly scented. Um, I don't know, I've been wearing this with like lip liner underneath, just a little bit of like a neutral kind of nudie lip liner and then this on top and it's it's been giving. So yeah, I've been really impressed by this one from Revlon. I'm definitely gonna keep this. This one from Blessed Moon. Again, this is just a case of where I was like trying out some new K-beauty stuff that I'd seen and be like, oh, this is new, let's give it a test. And I don't think this one is bad, but I don't think it's better than the other one that I like more. It's fine. I just, you know, I wanted to investigate to see if it was worth, you know, chatting about and it hasn't really been worth chatting about. So we're gonna declutter that one. And then I am gonna keep these two. This one is the Etude House Cherry Moisture Lip Glow. This is like, I've talked about these Etude House lip glosses before. They're kind of they're crazy. They're just really, really glossy and stay really well. 
I have already used this a lot, although it doesn't really look like I've used it a lot, but I have. I've used this so much. Um, so I guess that also speaks well to like how long it lasts. But yeah, keeping this one. And then this one from Ciate is the Plump, no, Pump Plump, <laughs> Pump Plump um, lip gloss. I just really like the like tip. It kind of comes out like, you kind of like push it down like that and it comes out like that. And I'm now gonna apply more lip gloss because I don't want it to go to waste. But this one is like a really sheer glossy lip gloss and it gets really minty. Oh my gosh, like I'm feeling it now. I'm almost like salivating. Only thing is it does get a little like sticky around here because you're kind of like smearing it on your lips. It's a nice little formula. So yeah, those are all my lip glosses. And then that is the last category of the declutter. That's it. And these are all of the things from drawer number three, the lip drawer that are being decluttered. And with that, we have come to the end of the declutter. So now let's see what everything is looking like after being cleared out. Here is the first drawer, which is all things face and base. Here is the second drawer, which is all things eyes. And the third drawer, which is all things lips. That was an absolute marathon of a video, but I hope you enjoyed this little, maybe not so little makeup declutter. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.